Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regularly scheduled SIO Township Planning Commission meeting for April 24th, 2023. And if um, we could all stand and say the pledge. Just when you say it. Just to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Secretary Chang, roll call, please. Okay. Commissioner Moore. Present. Here. Commissioner Sharma. Present. Commissioner Chang, present. Commissioner Human. Present. Commissioner Hyde. Present. And Commissioner Culbertson. Present. Moore. All right. And uh, Commissioner Reiser will be joining us uh, probably within 15 minutes. We'll announce him being present when he arrives. All right. Moving to adoption of the agenda. Uh, is there anyone that would like to modify or add to the agenda? I move to accept the agenda as is. Second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Human and supported by Commissioner Moore to accept the agenda as published. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, great. Um, then communications and correspondence. Anyone receive any emails? There were uh, no communications uh, transmitted to the Planning Commission. Okay. Then uh, there's no presentation uh, this evening. So with that, we'll move on to public comment. And uh, people wishing to address the Planning Commission on matters which are not on the public hearing portion of the agenda, that would be uh, with regard to the Nicholson conditional use for a self-storage facility. Um, uh, are welcome to comment at this time and such oral presentation shall be limited to three minutes except a representative or spokesperson of an organization shall have five minutes to address the commission. So with that, I will um, open public comment at 7.02. And we'll start with folks that are present in the room and then move on to our um, public on Zoom. Is there anyone here that would like to address the Planning Commission on anything not scheduled for public hearing? Okay, seeing no one in the room, anyone online? Uh, yes, we have a couple of virtual hands up. Um, Mr. Rob Pattinson has his hand up first. So, Mr. Pattinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Rob Pattinson of Sio Township. Um, I was happy to see the letter from Doug in the agenda packet tonight. It seems that uh, the theater developer has narrowed down their options a little bit. And I was very uncomfortable with their previous presentations to the board asking the planning commission to uh, give them basically a blank check. They wanted to know what in the universe of things they could do, they can do. And it seems to me that's what the zoning is for. And the planning commission is about uh, evaluating a presentation for its suitability for the township. And I hope that that's how you proceed in the future. Um, in Bob Hyde's uh, report from the Huron River Watershed Council, um, he talked about a uh, a lawsuit in Canton Township about tree cutting. I'd be very interested to hear more about that and how we think that might uh, impact Sio Township. And also there's a link to the meeting at the end and the link that's on there is for a Planned Parenthood thing. Uh, <laughs> are we sure that that's the right link for the Zoom I'll, meeting? I'll report? double check it, Rob. Okay, and and if you uh, if you get that, please email that to me, and I'll put it up on the video in the description, and then people will be able to link to it. That's coming up relatively soon, so. Um, yeah. And then also, in Riser's report to the Planning Commission, there is uh, he had several paragraphs on the LPC meeting, um, and in fact tonight at the Dexter Township uh, meeting. They're talking about doing some annexation of the property off of Baker Road. And so I would highly recommend the Planning Commission uh, view the latest LPC meeting on YouTube to help understand what's going on there. Um, 
Uh, Jillian Carey came up with some documents that that annexation process had been tried in 1985 and 1990 and had been rejected by the county. So there is some history there and I think the Planning Commission should be aware of it. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Do you have another hand up? And that is uh, Jonathan. Um, Jonathan, you have the floor. Hi, thanks. I'll be quick. Um, just noticed in the packet that one of the proposals for the, uh, the theater is uh, three to six story buildings. There is no circumstance where we should be approving six story buildings here in Sao Township until we have the infrastructure, mainly fire support, to um, to make that type of building safe. Okay, I don't, despite other accusations earlier by the board members that this board or this uh, subcommittee, uh, commission, sorry, uh, that we want to limit growth. Um, and so we oppose these types of projects. We don't have a ladder truck and we're talking about a six story building. Please, Planning Commission, please don't approve anything until we have the infrastructure to protect people's lives. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. There are no other, although there are a few people in the um, online, there are no other hands up at this point. Right. Just wait just a couple more minutes or seconds just to be sure. All right, I'll entertain a motion to close public comment. So moved. Uh, moved by Commissioner Moore, support by Commissioner Hyde. Any further discussion? All those in favor of closing public comment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, public comment is closed at 7.07. .07. And we'll move on to our scheduled public hearing this evening. Um, just to give everyone a, a, an overview of um, how we conduct the public hearings. Uh, first, we hear from uh, the applicant. Uh, and then uh, commissioners can ask uh, clarifying questions of fact. Uh, we also hear from our uh, consultants. In this case, it'll just be Carlisle Workman because this is a conditional use. I actually think OHM did provide Oh, a, they did provide a, yeah. okay, a, pardon me, um, then also from OHM. And uh, then uh, any other questions of fact, and then we open it up um, uh, for uh, uh, the public. Uh, and we generally um, ask people present and then those online. So with that, um, I'll open uh, the public hearing for uh, conditional use 23005 PSP number 23002 Nichol Nicholson conditional use for self storage facility at 709. So if the applicant will uh, introduce themselves and absolutely thank you. Uh, good evening, Commission. Uh, my name is Tom Covert. I'm with Midwestern Consulting. I'm here tonight with Nick Donofrio from Grand Sacla, the developer of the project, is Council Scott Manzone. Um, you, many of you, I think most of you were here before when we came before you with the project that was the rezoning of this uh, parcel of land off of Jackson Road. Um, just for some context, I'm going to zoom in a bit here. This is the site. It is owned by the Nicholson Trust. It's south of Jackson Ave. It is east of Three Ls Drive, west of Thetford, and a bit east of Baker Road. This is Baker Road here uh, to our west. Uh, if a landmark might be the barn that exists on Jackson Road, kind of close to the road, it's like a three-story tan barn. We're just to the east of that, and east of Three Ls Drive. Does it sit on Jackson Road? It has frontage on Jackson Road and 3L's Drive. 
what I wanted to talk a bit tonight about uh, here is what our self-storage is not. Our self-storage is not rows and rows of cars or campers or boats or anything like that. Um, we are interior climate controlled self-storage. Uh, we're not moving supplies for sale. We're not rental trucks. Um, we're not uh, buildings with a bunch of exterior access like you might see uh, in some older self-storage facilities. Everything's interior at our site. What humidity controlled self-storage is, our storage units that safeguard people's belongings from high humidity and extreme temperature swings. There's a very good quality uh, HVAC system that works to control the temperatures and humidity levels, um, stabilizing them so that there's no risk of uh, moisture or mold. Our self storage is all interior. There's no external storage. Temperature and humidity controlled. No U-Haul rental. We're actually a very low uh, traffic generator in the AM and PM peak hour. Uh, our calculations show that we're about six total AM peak hour trips and about 10 uh, PM peak hour trips. We're, we're no sales of moving supplies, boxes, tapes, tape, those kinds of things. It is a high security facility. Uh, there are cameras and things that uh, control entrance. And we're no dumpster, so we're not a spot where people can bring their garbage or create garbage from what they've been storing at the site. Typical items that might get stored at a facility such as this is uh, wine, antiques, artwork, film and photography, uh, musical instruments, paper documents, clothing, uh, electronics, furniture, and digital media. Some examples of this are seen in the pictures here. Um, in my opinion, what you'll see here is these start to look like uh, uh, office buildings, uh, kind of like techie office buildings, warehouse uh, facilities that are uh, slanted towards industrial use, windows, different kinds of materials more upscale. Interior loading and unloading, so this is much different than what you might have seen in a typical self-storage. You pull your vehicle in, your truck, your car, you park, you unload into carts, you take those carts uh, to your unit, either on the first floor or there are elevators that you can go to the second floor and um, load and unload on the interior of the facility. Uh, in our opinion, the, the project will be a breath of fresh air along the Jackson Road corridor here. Very, um, the architecture of this building resembles contemporary office research facilities. Uh, it would be one of the newer buildings in this area. One of the things that we had supplied um, for the project was some information about operations at the facility. Office hours, Monday through Friday, would be 9.30 to 6 p.m. Saturday 8.30 to 5, Sunday 11 to 3. People would have access to the facility from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. There would be up to two employees that would be uh, at the site. Probably one to two employees as they get up to lease and, and, um, and census. And then after that, there would be one, maybe two employees, uh, depending on how the facility gets used. Uh, there was a note about prohibited uses and hazardous materials. Uh, what the intent is with that is that um, they would be identifying what those materials are in their lease agreement. So there's a process when you, uh, as a user of the facility, you would come in to prepare, to prepare and sign your lease agreement. Hazardous materials would be identified. It would be in your lease that they're not allowed to be stored there. This is very much like what you might see for CubeSpark. Uh, and other similar facilities, very, very similar to their lease agreement and, and their national lease agreements for renting space and interior self-storage uh, self facilities. Um, we feel, we, we have received comments from Doug and his team at Carlisle Workman. We've also received comments from OHM. Uh, you'll see in there that there are highlights to the number of uh, standards and findings per the conditional use. 
you'll see when you run through that that the proposed self-storage is compatible with the uses that are allowed in the industrial limited industrial zoning districts. We've demonstrated by submittal of our plans what uh, parts of the site may be impacted by the proposed development and what natural features of the site may be impacted. We've also worked with the County Road Commission. So we have an access, vehicular access off of Jackson Ave and then out on 3Ls Drive. We've worked with the Road Commission and received uh, conditional approval from their office. Um, the use of the site in, our, in this fashion as an um, interior climate controlled self storage is not considered detrimental or hazardous or disturbing to the existing future neighboring uses or persons. There's no additional public facilities or infrastructure services that are anticipated for the use of the site in this manner. Um, we have sanitary and water service both in 3Ls and at uh, Jackson Ave. Um, and you'll note that the sixth item was compatibility with the township's master land use plan. And as noted in the report, uh, we are in conformance with the township's master land use plan. So with that, our goal tonight is to review with you the conditional use request, um, share with you a little bit about the project uh, as far as how the operations go. We'd like to gain your support of the project uh, and allow us to move forward with site plan review and those kinds of things. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to present this to you. If you have questions, we're here to, to answer them. Thank you. Let the record show that uh, Commissioner Riser arrived at 717. All right, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, uh, So just to kind of remind everybody about the process, I like to do this. I know there's not that many folks here, but it's good to kind of go over the process. Um, so this is a conditional land use. So this is one of the times that the Planning Commission and ultimately the Township Board has some discretion in a uh, land use. Uh, in every zoning district, as I've mentioned before, there's kind of two lists of land uses. One is the uses permitted by right, and those are the things that um, are what we call non-discretionary review or approval, and if pretty much the applicant meets the minimum standards, community is uh, pretty much obligated to approve those kind of site plan issues. Uh, and then there's another list of uses that are conditional uses, some committees call the special uses. And other uses that uh, are to be reviewed individually by the planning commission because they have been identified at some point in the past. Yeah. Doug, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but somebody just posted that your microphone isn't on. Oh. I don't know if the microphone actually works. I'll try to talk really now. So hopefully, a pi hopefully, a pick up there. So, um, so I was talking about conditional land use. So, conditional land use is those list of uses that have been identified in the past uh, by the township as uses that could have detrimental impacts to the site itself, the township, the neighboring properties, and they they require a little extra review on the part of the township. And they also require a public hearing so that neighbors within 300 feet of the property can be notified, they can come out, voice their concerns or support for a project. Uh, if this was just a standard site plan, that notification is not given. It is strictly a decision of the Planning Commission. Um, but this is one of those uses that uh, in the past has been identified as potentially having negative, uh, potentially negative impacts on adjacent properties. Additionally, land uses are those uses that may be appropriate in some locations and may not be appropriate in other locations, and it's up to the township to make that determination. Um, so tonight we're, we're accepting public comment. I will remind the Planning Commission that uh, in the past, uh, the Planning Commission has taken public comment and sometimes not taken action if there are if there's some public comment that 
requires to be addressed, or if there's planning commission comments that need to be addressed, uh, kind of was past practice to not take action the night of a public uh, hearing. Um, I know we changed that a little bit here and there if it's an issue that uh, doesn't seem controversial, but typically speaking, the planning commission doesn't take action the night of a public hearing. Um, so with that all being said, uh, the applicant has gone over the project. I uh, won't go with too much into the, the, the project description and that sort of thing, but they are proposing a self-storage facility, a little different than other self-storage facilities we've seen here in the township. Uh, most of the existing self-storage facilities would be more of the traditional, you know, full building type facility with exterior doors and you pull up and you, you do everything uh, from that. Typically, an example of a more recent one that's been approved by the township has been the uh, Pirates Cove self-storage, which I believe is west of this location, also on Jackson. Um, so this is a little bit different uh, uh, of, a, of a facility. Um, so with regard to land use, some of the things we look at when trying to determine if this use would be compatible and meets the conditional land use standards are the uh, uh, land use, current land use and zoning of the sites that surround the property. Um, to the north of this subject site is um, uh, Jackson Road, but beyond that there's various commercial and industrial land uses. Um, uh, one of the properties is zoned I-1, but industrial. Uh, south of the property is zoned C4 Composite Commercial. It's an existing office industrial area. East of the subject property uh, is an existing industrial area zoned I-1, and west of the subject property is 3Ls Drive. Beyond that is also zoned I-1 Limited Industrial. So with regard to the existing land uses, these, this area is surrounded by non-residential land uses. <clears throat> so it's either industrial or commercial uh, surrounding the property on all sides. The current property is vacant if you've been out to the site or looked at the area of photography for the prop project. So there are no, no uh, buildings on the site currently. <clears throat> With regard to the master plan, we do point out that the master plan, as you can see on page three of our report, uh, is shown in this blue color, and that blue color is mixed use office industrial. So this is a district that anticipates uh, office industrial type uses within, within the township. And um, while not a use permitted by right, obviously a one of the uses that is allowed after special review is uh, self-storage facilities. So we don't have any uh, current issue with the Township Master Plan and how and what the applicant is proposing. With regard to natural resources, again, if you've been out to the site, the site um, is vacant. There are no wetlands or floodplains present that we could find as, as would be depicted on County, the county website, uh, GIS program. Um, the site's fairly level. There are some there are some trees on site that will likely be impacted by um, the project. Those would be reviewed in more detail at the site plan stage of review. Again, uh, kind of back up on that particular point. Uh, this is a two-step process. So right now we're just looking at the use. You know, would a self-storage facility be acceptable in this location of Sire Township? And if uh, the Planning Commission and ultimately the Township Board were to determine that this, that this site was okay for self-storage use, uh, the applicant would then move forward with a submitting of a site plan. Um, that would be a whole separate uh, process at that point. Uh, with regard to central facilities and services, this site is within the township's water and sewer service district. <clears throat> uh, any kind of connections or water use would be reviewed at uh, the site plan review stage. Typically, I will say though that self-storage facilities are a low uh, utility user, so we wouldn't anticipate this being uh, particularly impactful with regard to the central facilities and services. 
I know OHM also did a review, so perhaps OHM's, um, OHM's review, or uh, uh, Stacy, who's here, will be able to address uh, potential impacts of the water and sewer district. With regard to traffic and access, uh, we, we generally agree with the applicant's um, depiction of traffic on this site. Uh, we use the trip generation manual from the uh, um, Institute for Transportation Engineering when we did our review and find that the uh, uh, peak generated trips, which is really what you're concerned with, uh, we, based on those tables, would indicate about 12 peak trips um, on a Saturday afternoon. That's when self-storage facilities would be most active. Um, approximately 121 trips um, all day on a Saturday, but really we look at more of the peaks to find out if there's impacts. Neither of those are particularly impactful uh, numbers, particularly along Jackson Road. So we don't have any um, issues with uh, traffic generation for this particular use. Uh, the uh, property is currently zoned industrial. So if a use, if a typical industrial facility, uh, warehouse or industrial building or an office, which is also a use permitted in the industrial district, if this use was uh, uh, used as something actually permitted by right, not requiring a special land use, we would expect um, substantially more traffic than what the applicant is proposing. So with regard to the conditional land use part, uh, there are six standards that we are supposed to find, Planning Commission and Township Board are supposed to find, with regard to special land uses. Um, those standards all have kind of circled back to how this property, how the use proposed will impact the township and how and or the adjacent properties or the property itself. So there's six standards. Uh, our comments are found on pages, uh, of those are really found on page five of our report. Um, and our, our, our main issue is how this site will be used with regard to the operation, uh, proposed use, hours of operation, number of employees, that can presentation address some of those uh, items. But other issues with regard to compatibility, uh, is, will it be served, you know, is the project compatible, will it be served by central facilities, will it be hazardous to existing users, uh, will, it cause, will it cause additional um, requirements at the public at public cost, uh, it will be compatible with the Township Master Plan. We went over some of those items, but we believe as presented, the applicant can address those uh, standards, and they did provide some of the information that we asked for uh, this evening in their presentation. So uh, I'm sure the Planning Commission will want to talk about those things, but we think that the applicant can meet those standards. Um, and like many special land uses or conditional land uses, there are some specific standards for self-storage facilities. Uh, there are four of those in the Sauer Township uh, zoning ordinance, and those have to do with um, uh, how, the, how the space will be rented, uh, specifically no activity on the rental of storage units uh, can occur, so you can't use individual storage units for businesses, I and mean, sometimes that occurs. This being an indoor facility, that would be probably even less likely to happen that someone would try to operate a business out, outside of or within one of these units because it would be so controlled with a, a, a uh, access. I know that's not the applicant's intention, um, but that's one of the requirements. Uh, they indicate that this will not occur, but um, perhaps the applicant can address that in more detail. One of the other standards is that no toxic or flammable hazardous materials will be allowed, that you, know, you can't store fuel, you can't store gas cans for a boat, things like that. Um, that in, in indicates, or we, we would ask how the applicant will enforce that kind of provision. Um, wanna make, we want to make sure that does not happen. Uh, the third item is that um, any outside storage of recreational vehicles has to be contained within a building. Um, the applicant indicates that they're not storing anything outdoors, or stored within a building or screened from view from any, any neighboring properties. Uh, 
uh, that's going to indicate that there'll be no recreational vehicle storage, and they kind of went over that in their presentation. And then finally, all exterior walls are supposed to be a masonry construction. In addition to that standard, this property is within the Jacks Road Overlay District. So um, architectural standards will be reviewed in detail at the final, at, or at, the, at the site plan stage of review. And um, so that's a standard that simply will have to be met at the site plan stage of review. And at this point, there are no variances being requested by the applicant, none that we could find that would be needed. Uh, we do mention with regard to site plan that, as I just said, this is within the Jackson Road Overlay District, so all the architectural standards and so on and so forth will have to be met, but those will be uh, reviewed in detail at the site plan stage of review. And uh, we provide as a recommendation, uh, we have three items, actually four items, one being uh, compliance with the Jackson Road Overlay standards, uh, particularly the architectural control standards, but we have three items that should be addressed to the satisfaction of Planning Commission. Um, I'll go over those items one more time. Uh, one, provide a narrative describing the operation of the proposed use, hours of operation, number of employees. Two, indicate how the user will prohibit toxic, corrosive, flammable, or hazardous materials from being stored in the facility. Three, the exterior building design and materials will be required to meet the Jackson Road overlay, overlay, overlay design standards. Um, and then that is similar to our fourth item. So we have three items that have to be addressed to satisfaction of the Planning Commission. And uh, with that, um, I'll turn it back over to, to you, Chairperson Culbertson. Any questions of Mr. Luan finding a fact? I do have a question or two, Mr. Luan. I, I might have misunderstood what you said, um, but did you say that the use is permitted by right? Okay, good. And then, no, only good because I didn't think I was hearing the right thing. Um, and I kind of get these, the conditional use, um, confused with the special use, but the conditional use is up to at the discretion of the Planning Commission in terms of its recommendation. It is a discretionary approval, yes. Okay. Um, and with regard to your four, your list of three things, we did receive the narrative, right? Yes. So that's uh, done. Um, and then we received their list of rules or um, their requirements for any tenants. So you would consider number two fulfilled as well? Um, I have not reviewed that, but I will accept that they well, let me, maybe I misspoke, but um, I was looking at this earlier, the um, Club Smart Self Storage Rules and Regulations and Prohibited Uses. Did you get a chance to review yeah. that? Okay. okay. I think you're onto something, though. If I could interject on that comment. His comment is, how are they going to enforce that? This doesn't address how they're I going see. to enforce it. So okay. I'm not quite sure that the answer is they've covered it. I don't think they have. Okay. And um, the number, the third thing that you wanted, um, I believe you indicated in your narrative today that that was, um, that was to come with a site plan. Is that Yes. That, that would be addressed at the site plan. Um, the Planning Commission, I just wanted to emphasize to the applicant that that's coming and there are some additional architectural standards that they're going to have to meet. And then once again, the conditional use is approved before we see the site plan. That's the, the process that I have to live with. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Um, and I noticed... It's my, I will say, it's my understanding and the applicant can expand on this. It's their desire at their own risk to apply for a site plan before township board approval. Um, they can do that. We've allowed that to happen before. Um, and so both processes could be running through. No, they have not applied yet for site plan, but that will be forthcoming. And um, I believe, right, I mean, yeah, that's what you guys are planning at this point. Uh, so there will be kind of parallel processes occurring. <coughs> 
at their own risk because the township board was to deny this. Ultimately, their site plan would be for nothing. So, if I'm understanding you correctly, unlike our process, when things get to the the uh, board of trustees level, they will look at the site plan prior to approval. Okay, it's I'm likely they won't. They, they will not have the site plan. Okay. They'll, they'll, they'll only have the same information. And the other thing I noticed in your memo um, was um, you did not make your standard recommendation. <laughs> it just said these four items, three items needed to be addressed. Are you recommending this product or project? Um, we actually that is a kind of our standard recommendation. We always and our recommendation is always that the items in our review have to be addressed to the satisfaction of the planning commission. So, okay, yeah, I'm fine so with that. that. That's pretty good. But you do make recommendations in your memos, but that's okay. Yeah. That's I understand. Your recommendation is that um, the applicant meets the requirements of our master plan, meets the requirements yeah, of our yes, statute. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've gone through and tried to list where I think things have been met or not. Okay. And then I've listed a few. The things in my recommendation are those of what I believe are outstanding issues that you guys have to So um, I just have one last question for you. And with regard to this infiltration study, have you had opportunity to review that? Still finding a fact? Yes. So, um, Mr. Lawan, uh, in your write-up, you talked about how the ordinance requires that exterior walls be or shall be of masonry construction. Um, and I know you also pointed out that this is a different type of self-storage. It isn't separate little buildings that are rows of buildings. Do they still have to be masonry on the second floor because you point out that they're not? So what? I don't know what the ordinance requires. Yeah, well the ordinance does require that all exterior walls be masonry. So to me that means all the way to the roof. Right, they're going to have to either revise it or provide us some information. Okay, I wasn't sure that's what was meant. Thank you. Any other questions around findings of fact? Just um, the footprint of the building vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the parcel, and is that why they want to do an underground storage, water infiltration, or or am I, am I getting that wrong? Which one? Uh, water storage. Filtration or storage? Infiltration. Okay. Well. I assume it stores it until it infiltrates. Yeah, so the, you know, I, the preferred storage from the water resources group is infiltration. I mean, that is, that is, and there's an actual requirement, and yeah, well, so, and it is a um, biodetention system. So it does have an outlet. Does it go underneath the structure or where does no. it go? It, it's in the rear. And to the south. Of that? I saw a, a brochure. It's in the site oh. plan document. Which yeah, actually for a conditional use we're not supposed to be looking at, but yeah. <laughs> considering, but you know, that's, what an they idea. provided it so we can yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, Thank you, Mr. That, so the, the proposed basin, right, correct? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Is that an exterior or underground? What's the, it's just a I don't surface. Yeah, Tom, Tom Co the engineer here. He might be yeah. able to that. You want to answer that, Tom? Uh, yeah, a, a couple of things, if I might. Um, to answer your specific question with regard to detention, we are not an underground system. We are an at-grade system. Okay. And um, what you'll see when the site plan becomes before you is that we've also included another a number of BMPs that... Um, are 
something that we've designed into the system and one of the things that would be useful in that evaluation is the infiltration report that you have so that's probably in your packet prematurely the other thing i wanted to say is when we receive carlisle workman's uh, review uh, on april 18th we submitted a memorandum to uh, the township and i think uh, commissioner morris referring to this which outlines and has narrative information with regard to office hours the lease with regard to the, the um, hazardous materials and, and what would be done there so if look i see a lot of head nodding so i assume that that's what you were referring to commissioner moore and you i with the rules and regulations it, yeah it, it talks about uh, hours of operation the time the, the facility would have access and then the number of employees and the prohibited use uses and a sample copy of what another facility in the township does. I do have extra copies if you don't have a copy of that. But well, I, I did get that. But I just, like Commissioner Hyde um, pointed out, um, and I thought this was good, so I appreciate that. And, um, and I thought it was great that you guys have that. Um, but I think what Commissioner Hyde was pointing out that Mr. Luan's memo was referring to is how would you regulate that how would you make sure that your regulations are being enforced by your tenants now what you are being are being adhered to by your tenants i should say you want me to answer that Not right now so um, it is a facility that would have uh, video so if and there'll be employees there during certain times so there's surveillance and so on and if those materials were seen to be brought into the facility they'd be asked to be removed thank you yeah yeah so so um scott just reminded me that on the application, they are supposed to give indication of what their intent is to store there. So with that, um, they would have an understanding of intent and then there's observation and um, the, the video that would see what you're bringing in and out and so on. A follow up question, does management have the right to um, enter the, 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 the storage yes. units? Yes, they do. Uh, Commissioner Rice, National and, and just uh, sidewalks there, right? That's one of the things I get hung up on sometimes. Is sidewalks? It's there, and that's not going to be an issue, correct? And natural landscape, giving them a pass on the trees. That's it's their intention to comply with the ordinance with respect to natural resources, trees, bushes, and all that stuff. Okay. Thank you. Um, how relevant, uh, we have heard this before in previous meetings too, on this subject and today also about the fire fighting capabilities. How relevant is that point raised by a member of the public? And you know what I'm referring to. The height of the building versus the equipment we have. Is that a relevant uh, point being brought up or not? Well, I mean, it's certainly relevant. Um, I mean, relevant to, to what extent and within reason yeah. or, or unreasonable? Again, I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm at loss on this one. Yeah, well, I don't think they were talking about this particular site. I think they were talking about our next item, next agenda item. That's well, they're not talking about this one. No. no. Okay, then, then, then uh, I'll forgo for that question. And uh, in a previous meeting, when we had the owners um, of the restaurant, that facility, in that complex, shop owners, um, they had brought up this issue about their business not being necessarily compatible with this kind of business. Again, since the last meeting, did the township look into that issue to understand? Again, next item on the agenda. Why? That, that's the next item. It's the Goodrich agenda. project. This is a totally different site. Okay. Yeah. This is 3Ls Drive and Jackson Road. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not the PUD amendment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But we will get to that. We will get to that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, then we'll move to OHF. Oh, you want to have another? I do. Yeah, I do. Sorry. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner Hyde. So I have a question for both the applicant and Mr. Luan. But is the rear of this site, does it have any issues with the adjoining property? Was that the, 
the same property line that was, uh, I, or am I remembering a previous application incorrectly? It almost seemed like there was a property line issue. No, I don't recall, but there was an attorney here. <laughs> They might be able to answer this question. Yeah, Scott Munzel, I'm the attorney for uh, Grand Sakwa, 301 North Main Street in Ann Arbor. And I, I wanted to uh, let you know, we've spoken with all of the neighbors that, uh, that adjoin the property, um, including the one to the south. There's no issue with the property line. Um, and he, everyone is aware of what the plans are. Um, and, you know, there's a variety of, of uses, uh, manufacturing, there's auto repair, there's kind of a storage facility, there's kind of an office type use. So um, none of the adjoining property owners have voiced any kind of objection or have any problems with the proposal. It was, it was a drain field on a storage building. Okay, and I will. I will have to look into that, and it obviously is a different. It, I building. think it, it may have been the Pirates Cove um, self storage. I probably have a neighbor to the south that was concerned about drainage on the property. Okay, and the only other question I had was um, how I know this will come up in the site plan review, but could you describe briefly how the building will be entered by somebody who's making use of their storage unit. They'll drive in from the front and drive out the side, or how, how is it? Yep, if you were visiting as uh, somebody driving a vehicle or a pedestrian, you'd come from Jackson, either the walk or the, the, the Jackson Ave. It's one way there. You'd turn into our facility on the curb cut from Jackson. You'd have the opportunity to park um, on the north side of the building there, or continue around and enter in the northernmost bay of the loading unloading area. So the building is a rectangular and then there's a long narrower rectangle next to it. That's here where you would enter through an overhead door. From the west side of the building? It is on the west side, but okay. the door is facing to the north. The door faces to the north. Okay, so you come in from the front as you come off Jackson Road all the way to the right. Okay, and you enter the building there, yep. drive into your unit. Is that how the fire department would have to enter if there was an yep. injury? So we've actually had a number of conversations with the fire chief. Uh, we've shared our plan, show how the truck would get through the site. You can actually get the truck into the site from either entry and make it around and out. We have proper hydrant coverage between the hydrants that exist on uh, 3Ls and the hydrant. The site yep. I just wanted in general. OHM. Our review is actually pretty brief tonight. Uh, we recommended approval of the conditional use in our letter from March 22nd. Um, it appears to be compatible with the existing infrastructure based on our preliminary review. Like Doug mentioned, the self-storage use is generally a pretty low user of water and sewage, so we don't foresee that being an issue. And we did not provide any site plan comments at this time in our letter due to the preliminary nature of the plans. Those will be provided once the applicant formally submits. Um, I'd be happy to answer any utility related questions if you have any at this time. Otherwise, that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Any questions for OHL? All right. Yes. Oh, yes. So have you reviewed this infiltration study? Not yet, no. Generally, that will be part of the site plan and even detailed engineering review once we dive into the stormwater calculations. Well, you know, since we've had a couple problems with infiltration stormwater systems, I'm keen to, I appreciate getting this information ahead of time instead of two or three days before uh, we have a meeting. Um, but I am um, 
paying attention to those things. Um, in your review of the property in the project, do you, um, are you anticipating or have you, have any concerns about the um, topography and, and what the needs of the project would be? I mean, can you give me a little bit of idea about um, your view as an engineer about this project on that piece of property? Yeah, I don't foresee any issues with the stormwater management. Um, the applicant did provide that infiltration report and even stormwater calculations on their plans. We just haven't reviewed them yet. Um, like I said, that's typically the site plan phase. And then water resources will also be reviewing these plans. So both their office and our office will make sure everything is good to go before approving it. So I'm glad you brought that up about water resources um, because I feel like I'm in the dark about that on uh, various projects. So, I mean, this isn't going to be a high, um, a high use project on the water system, but um, when, when you do report to us about that, the water usage, will you be coming with some, some some facts, some figures, so that we understand if they're under or over the allotted amount, and where does that leave us in our total usage after that, if, if that's something that you could report to us in the future about. Is that- Yeah, are you talking does about- that question the, make sense? The sewer usage? Water sewer. Okay, yeah. So, because as, as I understand it, each property along the Jackson Road has so many um, I forget the thank you are used and that are allotted for each property and I'd like to know if in these projects are we within those are used and that the, I understand the are used are relative to wastewater right okay so are we within the are used and are we within the water usage because we also have a contract that provides that and I understand each property has uh, fresh water so much fresh water allotted to them. Now, again, this project is not a high intensity, like a use of water, like a, um, a what would be a, like a car wash or something, but I'm, I'm looking to have that reported to us. And so I'm just asking that we know what those figures are um, when it's time to report on the preliminary site plan. Yeah, of course. Um, I will say that sometimes we don't know the anticipated REU usage until the detailed engineering phase. Sometimes we know that in the site plan, but that's generally required in detailed engineering. But if we do know it in advance of approving the site plan, we can certainly give a um, update on where things stand. This project, you don't have anything to worry about. There's still quite a few left um, in terms of REUs. So this one shouldn't be an issue, but certainly on larger projects, we can provide that information to you. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, one project in particular that shall go nameless that you're aware of, and so are we, is that we had issues come back to us about the stormwater system. And part of the problem is, is in our process, in the planning commission process, we don't even see um, full site plans, and we don't even see detail. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of looking around you because her face is at the bottom. We don't even see detailed engineering about that stuff. So we're approving things in some ways in the dark. And, you know, hopefully the Board of Trustees, I'm sure they'll catch stuff, but I'm just saying, in one particular project, it's become a disaster where we're trying to think about a, a drain district and all kind of stuff. So. Anyway, I mean, look forward to it because this is going to be something that I'm going to be asking to know a little bit more about. So I will clarify that the stormwater is not the same as the RU. RU is going to be the sewage. Mm -hmm. So the stormwater runoff or anything like that doesn't affect RUs. I understand. Okay. I understand. Just want to make it clear. I apologize for my novice. That's <laughs> okay. In this area. okay. But I just don't want to get caught down the road on a project um, like that again. So, thank you. I have um, 
just a question of Mr. Luan, and that is whether um, you can condition a conditional use, for example, because this is on Jackson Road corridor, that it would be, um, for instance, a, an enclosed climate controlled self storage. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. All right. With that, we'll open it up to um, the public. Is there anyone here in Township Hall that would like to address the Planning Commission on this <coughs> conditional use? Public hearing. Seeing none, no, we'll, no, 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 well, okay, um, now we're going online, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, sorry. Sometimes I, I get... Uh, yeah, you're after monitoring that. I start the meeting, I, I, sometimes I lose focus of the meeting, but I do see a hand up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ryan Yappel, uh, you have a hand up here in the public hearing. Uh, you now have the floor. Good evening, Doug. Good evening, everyone. A um, couple of things real quick, just listening and looking over the uh, documents that were submitted for this. Commissioner Sharma, um, from my time as well as uh, Commissioner Hyde's time on the Fire Services Guidance Committee, uh, our firefighters currently can only really get 12 to 15 feet up in the air of the tallest our ladders on our trucks as well as the uh, equipment we have allows us to really fight fires. Anything beyond that, we have to wait for uh, mutual aid equipment from either the city of Ann Arbor or someone uh, elsewhere that has equipment that can do that. Um, this building, when I looked at the site plan documents that the applicant submitted, is currently estimated to be between 30 and 34 feet at its highest point. So we would not be able to fight a fire if it broke out on the roof, for example, in an air conditioning or uh, HVAC unit. Um, one, one thing I'd like to point out about this, um, ultimately the applicant said of Great job of making a beautiful looking building. Um, I'm still not sure that it makes the most sense uh, given it is a conditional use. It is right on Jackson Road. Uh, and this planning commission was very specific. When I went through the conditional use process about a year ago on exactly how we wanted to view this corridor, um, the area is four tenths of a mile from where my property is located at 7535 Jackson Road. Um, we made clear that this is a gateway area to the, the community. And even while they have made a building that um, does look beautiful. Uh, I'm still not sure it's the most appropriate use. Um, further, uh, one thing that may come up as a problem later on, I don't know if Menard's litigation heavy, but Menard's uh, representative turns out to be a uh, lawyer. Uh, so this might cause litigation issues. But beyond that, one other thing I'd just like to mention to the applicant, um, I understand you don't want to really allow people to throw away trash something they'll probably require you to have anyway is a dumpster of some sort, even if it's a small one. I didn't see it anywhere on the site plan. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Yappel. Is Mr. Yappel with our fire department? No. He was on the fire services committee is what he was. I see. And, um, one, yeah, go ahead. One, just one clarification. Um, thanks. Mr. Yelp for your comments, but the um, the low or the Menards issue is a little different because if you remember, they were requesting a rezoning. rezoning. This is already industrial. Yes, that, so this is not. This is a totally different process that was denied. So uh, a little different situation. So I'm point that. Out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anyone else online? No one else online. All right. Then I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Moved by Second. Commissioner Reiser and supported by Commissioner Moore. Any further discussion? All right. Then um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, public hearing is closed at 7:59. On to deliberation. So, do you want a motion for purposes of getting the discussion going? We. And is there a model motion, or do I just move that the planning commission recommend uh, approval of the conditional use application? Uh, I'm prepared to do that just to get things going. Whether it prevails or not is. I know that's how the trustees usually do it. 
Yeah, right. So I'm. Uh, so you're used to that, and we if that's not how we do it. Sure, that's okay too. If we had discussion and we came up with items that we wanted to revise the model motion to meet, or the motion, oh, be friendly with all. Yeah, <laughs> might be. Uh, we appreciate that. No, 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 no. I no, I'm, I'm just talk without a motion on the floor. That's fine too. I think one of the things in this case, too, is we're not required to take action with a, okay. uh, but if there's a consensus that we're ready to take action, then that makes sense. Commissioner Moore. I'll start the planning commissioner's discussion. Yes. And by saying that I would be in favor of postponement, since we learned in our recent citizen planner training that postponement is postponing an item to another meeting. and tabling is just putting an item at the end of your agenda. So I'm in favor of that. I mean, this is something that's just before us. Um, and uh, I would like to take a little bit more time to contemplate the project. I, oh, and I would just also say that I'm not, I'm not, not in favor of the project. Excuse me for my inartful language, but um, so that's just all I wanted to say about the project. And the only other thing I wanted to say was, um, I know we've been talking about a study <clears throat> for the Jackson Road Corridor, incorporating more mixed use. And when I'm using the word mixed use, I'm talking commercial and residential. And here we are. Um, we can barely get the study going to figure out what we're going to do with Jackson Road. And I'm concerned about the plethora or, of projects regarding storage we got a lot of so that must be a really good business <laughs> and less and less complicated because there seems to be a lot of people in, interested in the um Seattle township for a storage enterprise so I, I have some thoughts about that and how this project i get it that it's zoned uh industrial i get that um but I'm concerned about that uh, future planning along that corridor. Mm -hmm. I, I second, and I think she read my mind. I, uh, I mean, everything she just said. Um, uh, we are seeing a huge, huge influx of this, this, this kind of business here, and I'm also quite impressed that we are becoming the mecca of storage facilities at this rate, and which is fine, totally fine. But the problem is that we all have a different vision as well, <laughs> a vision which we talk about often, uh, and which we need to also realize, not just talk about. So I fully second and more, uh, Commissioner Moore's uh, point of view. She said it very articulate, in a very articulate fashion. Thank you. Okay. Other commissioners? Yeah, Commissioner Hyde. It isn't that I'm uh, against storage. It's that we are, I did want to bring up that we're in the process of, of getting ready to talk about what we want to see Jackson Road look like. And one of the things that I might say is by going into the um, conditional uses rather than the by rights uses, where we are allowing things to be in there that aren't necessarily envisioned when you set up, I mean, yes, it's a potential, but uh, it's not an industrial use. This is, the, I wouldn't call cell storage a business that's making product. So uh, it isn't, and this isn't a primary use for the, for the zone. So I'm a little concerned because we are going into this uh, secondary uh, sort, uh, secondary applications for uses. Well, we're still trying to get a conversation going about how we want. Yes. Just, I'm just curious. I'm fully prepared to support this tonight for the conditional use, and I have probably more questions at the site plan stage. But are we, for the other commissioners, are you looking at possibly postponing because you want to look at the kind of the future land use here or, or a mixed type use as opposed to the 
But I'm just, I'm wondering if it comes back, you know, next meeting, what, what, what are the questions that they'll have to respond to? Right. And I don't know what our timing is yeah. for having the conversation about Jackson Road. It may be too late for this one because if it isn't coming up in the next meeting or two, okay. it's going to be, it, it, I think it's, it's going to be, it, it's probably going to take a, a good, you know, what, six budget. months, a year, or something like that. Before we can have the, the conversation. No, but we'll have the conversations. But before we can, yeah. What's going to take a year, six months to a year to, to redo the planning for the Jackson Road corridor? To complete it. Yeah, we were just budgeting for that. No, I understand. We're not going to complete it in the next meeting or two. But if we're going to begin the, the, the discussions, uh, then then it would be appropriate for me to postpone this discussion. But if we're not going to start that for another couple of months, then I would not I would not defer, make them wait until then. I just wanted to get that said, that that is a concern. I know we're going to have the conversations shortly. How soon, I don't know. Yeah, it's a dilemma because, you know, there's only so many parcels up and down Jackson Road. And why would we even spend the money on a study if we're not going to, I mean, if it's not within our vista to be able to implement something of mixed use residential commercial, because, I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this, since I've been a commissioner, projects have been coming to us fairly frequently and steady. And that's not a bad thing. It's just that it's faster than we can take in what we want to do with Jackson Road. That's our dilemma. Um, it's, not that, it's not that this is a particularly bad project or anything like that, but it, um, we're, so that's just to put that out there. So, I mean, so, I mean, that's a fair point. Uh, uh, if we have that uh, plan, uh, a plan to migrate, uh, to revisit the Jackson Corridor plan and so on and so forth, then what do we do? Uh, if it is, it probably is in our best interest to focus on that first and foremost then, and not look at a longer duration, like you said, six months, 12 months, but try to expedite and give it more focus, which and the burden falls on this group, essentially, because we owe it to Sire Township to develop that vision in a manner that can benefit Township many decades from now, but any mistakes made today may unnecessarily hurt us tomorrow. So if it's six to 12 months, then maybe we have to do something about it. Take it to the highest leadership level that we need to move this forward. I guess the budget is approved now, so maybe that's not, no longer required. That, that concern is no longer relevant, but perhaps it should have been done faster, sooner rather than later, early, the bu budget process. But regardless, that's what under the bridge. But going forward, we should probably focus on this. Yeah, because if we, if, if, we, if, we, if we are envisioning this whole thing and trying to create a vision, if not, then we don't have to worry about it. Just be honest about it. <laughs> yeah, then we, then, then we can do whatever, we, whatever it comes our way. Again, I, it, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure this is a correct point I'm making, but let me put it this way. When this whole master plan for Sire Township was created many, many decades ago, Sire Township was different, right? So is that kind of reason why we have a lot of flexibility in the use of? Well, I think that just to answer in the uh, master plan, which just a couple of questions. The master plan is relatively recent, first of all. It was approved in 2021. 2021. No, 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 not that, but that moment, I mean. But the Jackson Road corridor, yeah, we it, haven't looked at in a while. Now, there, I guess there are two things here. One, you know, it is an industrially zoned property, so. And, and when was that done, kind of? Many that, decades ago? It was yeah. actually uh, relatively recent because okay. the, all the adjacent uses are industrial. Okay. Okay, so. I think it was rezoned in 2022. No, just for the last year. Zoned. Yeah. yeah. Um, but prior to our conversation about uh, studying the Jackson, Jackson Road. Road. Yeah. So, okay. um, the, so because we do have some discretion, you know, that with a conditional use, um, if it were a by right industrial 
sort of use, we wouldn't have that ability. And I don't think it, you know, it, you know, we don't want to do a moratorium while we study something. But anyway, um, I guess I'm a little bit torn because I do think um, that this is being enclosed and controlled um, climate storage. It puts it in a little different and it is subject to the overlay district. So from a, a, a building uh, orientation, the materials and so forth, um, you know, that's that, that's it, it's a little different than, yeah, the, the typical kind of storage. Um, you know, whether or not this, you know, this conditional use certainly isn't detrimental to adjacent properties. It's just, um, you know, kind of weighing the lost opportunity. And, you know, frankly, the because this fronts on the industrial drive, and has a very narrow um, uh, frontage on Jackson Road, the impact is relatively you know, limited compared to some of the other parcels that we could look at for multifamily or something like that. Um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, we've got a large piece of property next to Thetford, but that's a pretty viable business at this point, maybe in, you know, you know, the next generation, it may be different, but that's, you know, quite a bit of time. Um, so that, I don't know, I'm sort of torn um, with this one. Do you want to? Yeah, if I can kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> so part of, you know, part of what we have to do is, is review documents and plans based on our current ordinance, current master plan. <clears throat> and one of the things that is always important to look at is what could happen on this site as permitted. And that's what my point was going to be citing yeah. the 36-67 um, districts, parent 16 limited yeah. industrial, and what could be there. Exactly. And what could be there are um, manufacturing, including pipe and molded and extruded products. What could be there conditionally is a tool and die shop or vehicle repair. There are a lot. Listen, I'm not in love with storage, and I don't use storage, but the, the facade on the drawings look pretty good. And it is, after all, industrial. So, you know, I don't think we're going to get that microbrewery there, folks, that people are going to drive to uh, on this limited industrial. You know, we're the ones that have these folks coming here because of the way we've zoned it. I don't mean this body here necessarily, but it is it is light industrial. So, so I mean... Well, it's not an industrial set of jobs either. You're not going to have 10 people working machinery all day long either. So. There is right. that. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's good or bad, or just like there are a lot of things, you know, under 16 paren, under paren, paren 16 limited industrial that could go there that we probably want less, either by right or conditionally. So I guess some are kind of cool, but you know, this isn't that application. Um, you know, like an artist in pottery in a recording studio. You know, that sounds hip. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> that's not yeah, 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 right. But but conditionally, self-storage under C5 is allowed. Um, and nobody's arguing about that. Uh, nobody's arguing about that. Right. I well, think uh, the argument is different. It is right. whether, what's our vision? That is the point. I, I don't think anybody's arguing it, about it that. Actually, it's not, I, but I, that, I, yeah, but, go ahead. The, but our vision is to, respond to their petition as they've done. I mean, that's kind of, we, there's the big picture vision, but there's also the application before us yeah. with, that comports with code. Right. I mean, so there's the dilemma. I'm, I'm aware, I, aware of that. So, uh, uh, again, you, you, yes, you're right, absolutely right. But again, what do you want to do, I guess, is the question. We, we, do we approve it? Because we have to approve. Well, that's and that up is, to his totally or her. Good, That's a good point, I mean, that's a fair, fair point. But the point, and and I don't know. You're gonna have to vote what what your analysis of our code and what there is. I'm prepared, like Commissioner Cheng, to to support this because it's light industrial. It's a conditional use. It 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 
they're doing right by the environment. This is why I ask about that. The sidewalks are there. That they're going to do the trees. They've got the, the the pond in the back like they're supposed to. They're they're not asking to like for special favors with respect to environment that I that I can sense. And they've got a an attractive facade. And I think maybe you brought up that you know you, they can't half-ass it and go concrete block from the second story up. It's got to be brick. It's got to be, be brick. And I'm sure that it's, it's going to be masonry. Or, or no. right, 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 yeah. So yeah. whatever whatever that is. But but um, you know I'm prepared to support this. At least I appear to. At least I think that's my current thinking now. But if Commissioner Moore or others need time to mull it over, I'm not opposed to that either. But at some point, we're going to have to take this up before our master plan gets changed. Probably. Well, not the master plan, but the um, Jackson Road yeah, District. Right. Yeah. And I just wanted to bring up that we are in the process of, well, we're just thinking about it. I'd like to see us in the process of and begin that discussion so that we won't have that hanging out there before we take action on two or three more. Now, if if they want, if we want to talk to them about, gee, what do you, what about an electric vehicle charger? Can you charge your vehicle while you're there? Or if the, you know, I don't, I, I, I'll leave that to this body or you site know, plan stage. What's that? What's that? That's in the site plan stage. No, but but you know, I mean, if there are those discussions, that, that, yeah, you know, I'll leave that to you folks to tweak it in that regard. Um, I. I guess I would want to condition it on it being enclosed in climate controlled self storage for two reasons. One, the enclosure is really important because of its position on Jackson Road. And two, that it's climate controlled. A lot of the self storage that we've got isn't climate controlled. So this at least provides a, 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 you know, a service that we don't have, even though it, it's storage. Climate controlled is a whole different. It, it, isn't that what they asked for? What? Isn't that what they proposed? Yeah, but but if we just say we approve self storage, oh. it, it could be any kind of self storage. Okay, sure. Yeah, and what I think is important here is it's one building. It's a mat, you know, a building mass. It's um, it isn't a bunch of little garage doors, and so it can conform visually you know they're talking about the form based code kind of thing that if it has you know the the form of xyz is the building closer to the jet to the road that kind of thing um then it is um you know the use doesn't matter as much as the the, the form and its relationship to the road do you consider Jackson Road Overlay District to be almost a form-based code? It, it started, yeah. It would. It, so it, 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 it defines got part location. Right it's more about mass form than use. But it, it, it isn't completely no. form-based. It was a it was a form-based light. Yeah. Light form-based yeah. light. I like that. Yeah, that's what. So it was. we at least have that. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying climate-controlled. They say climate-controlled interior self-storage. So we okay. use all those words. Yeah. I think that was that would be important. Those are their words. Okay. I'd be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think they're. Okay. 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 Uh, Mr. Commissioner Human, did you want to say something? Sure. Yes, I wouldn't mind sharing thoughts. Um, I've said in the past, I think on the uh, the Menards request to do this, that I couldn't think of a worse use of land in Sio Township than a self storage facility. However, um, I have to side with um, Commissioner um, Riser and Commissioner Chang in that uh, currently we do allow for this, um, at least conditionally. Uh, in, a, in a sense, we have to allow for it somewhere in our township. Um, looking at the, uh, the surrounding area, um, if we're going to allow it somewhere, the, this seems like a better place than nowhere. I agree that it would be great if we could have a different vision for Jackson Road um, uh, and and to have people come up with something more than just self-storage facilities uh, to, to propose uh, in these areas uh, but I think that that change has to happen outside of a, a uh, 
conditional rezoning application. I think that that needs to happen before they get here. So with everything that's out, um, I would I would support um, uh, approving this. I probably would not make the motion or second it, but I would support it. <laughs> okay. Well said. All right, then I, um, I, I see the petitioner would like to make a comment. Yeah, I didn't know if it was appropriate during uh, deliberations, yeah. but, <laughs> but I can recognize you. That's why you. we ignored you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I kind of went up and down. No, but uh, if I could, um, to speak to some of the concerns that you have raised, um, in a way, you know, you're somewhat limited by the parcels that come before you. I mean, this is a parcel that's vacant, 3.5 acres. Um, you know, you're, even though you may have a vision that you want to implement for the Jackson Road, you're going to be restricted by what is already there. And one of the problems, let's say, for this site, it's three and a half acres. It was for sale for a long time. There's not many pure industrial users that are going to need a little site like that. Um, it is sandwiched between two manufacturing facilities right now, Thetford and Hoosac. Uh, and there's an auto repair facility to the south. You're going to have some real limitations on who would want to go into that particular site regardless of the visioning, which I can appreciate, and you know, that's, that's a great thing, but you just may not be able to get there with this particular site, given the reality of the lay of the land. Um, and so I just wanted to note that, um, you know, it, it has been for sale for a long time, and it's got some limitations on who would want to go there. Um, and then, you know, uh, obviously it was, it was, it's been, stated that it does actually meet all the conditional use standards that you have in your ordinances and it is consistent with the master plan so i mean there are some good reasons to to support it so that's all i wanted to add <laughs> okay this will be our yeah our last one and then we'll entertain a motion I, yeah i don't want it's not really an apology but i used this to push us to get going you know to point out how important it is to get going on our re revisioning of Jackson Road. So, use you as an opportunity. Thank you. All right. Then we will entertain a motion. Well, I don't want to jump something if there's a motion to a, a table or, or to use the nomenclature postpone, uh, not table CNADM. But uh, if, if Kim, if you need to push it off, for a month or two weeks or whatever to consider it, I'm fine with that either. I don't want to give the bums rush to something that this body isn't prepared to to to, to, to deliberate on or to, to, to vote on. You know, yeah. I'm going to defer to you on that. I mean, I'll make a motion, but I don't want to do one. You know, if if you need some time to consider it, I want to respect that concern you have. Well, I was listening to everybody's comments after my comment, and um, I thoroughly understand what everybody said, um, and I think um, there's some credence to everybody's remarks, um, but I will be voting down the motion to approve the project, not because I'm against storage, but because I want to move this body to do the job they said they want to do. Now, if you don't want to do it, <laughs> we don't have to do it. Um, I don't think that that's best for our community. Um, I know what the statute says. I mean, the, the ordinance. I apologize. Um, it's, uh, but we have discretion here. And um, I'll just end it by saying, if the study's a year away, that's way too long. I think I've already addressed that when I said there are only so many parcels left. So um, I will, you could go ahead with your motion. Um, I think the discussion allowed things to be flushed out tonight. Um, and I'm gonna vote against it because I think the planning is a major piece that's missing in this township. We, the projects come, and that's you know not any fault of the applicant, projects come here and we just vote on it. 
Yeah, we, just, we, look at, we look at the statute, it's very technical. The memo from our consultants are very technical, and we move along, and the process carries itself. We're not, we're not in command of the process. The process is set up to approve or not approve, or whatever, move it along. I appreciate and I, I'm, I'm, you know, one of the things I learned at the citizen planner um, seminar is that part of our role our statutory role is to plan, not just vote on projects. So, um, which I was really, you know, I wanted to say to, I haven't had a chance to Commissioner Rakish that when he asked that three years ago about what's the plan, what's the overall plan, he got shot down. And uh, I didn't know enough, um, but I do think that people ought to be thinking about that, not just project to project. And I'll just leave it at that. I appreciate how do we get them to come knock at our door aspect yeah. of planning versus right. like, what do we do when they're knocking at the door today? Yeah. I, right. uh, that, that dichotomy, that dilemma. Yes. I, I think there is a missing piece um, for that as well as how to move it forward how to get us going. I mean, I think, in all fairness to Chairperson Culberson, I think she's trying to do that with the study. It's just that, you know, we're, we have a, so, you know, I, mean, um, I don't want to repeat myself. You know. okay. I think um, we'll look at, if we don't have time in our current agendas, we'll schedule some working sessions, and that's a way we can speed it along. Excellent idea. Okay. All right. So, I think I guess I would move that the Planning Commission uh, approve and recommend approval to the Board of uh, Trustees the uh, conditional. I, I want to get the nomenclature right. Is it? It's. Uh, the yeah. The, you can read it on the. It's, It's regarding uh, partial H-08-20-200-10 located at 7155 Jackson Road. The um, conditional use uh, and that the six standards contained in our ordinance 36-224 having been satisfied. One, that the proposed use will be harmonious and in accordance with the objectives and regulations of this ordinance. Two, that the proposed use will be compatible with the natural environment and existing and future land uses in the vicinity. Three, that the proposed use will be served adequately by essential public facilities and services such as highways, streets, police and fire protection, drainage ways, refuse disposal, or that the persons or agencies responsible for the establishment of the proposed use shall be able to provide adequately any such service. Fourth, that the proposed use will not be detrimental, hazardous, or disturbing to the existing or futuring neighboring uses, persons, property, or the public welfare. Five, that the proposed use will not create additional requirements at public cost for public utilities and services that will be detrimental to the economic welfare of the community and that six, uh, the proposed use will be compatible with the township's adopted master plan. Uh, friendly amendment. And, 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 and I would ask support for that, and I'm open to any friendly amendments. I think when you talked about the proposed use, you should, we should insert the words right there that um, Chairperson Culberson was trying to get us to put in there, and that would be the uh, climate controlled interior cell storage usage or the proposed you the proposed use as a climate controlled interior, interior cell storage, cell storage. Say, as presented by the app as presented yeah, by the app that would be thank great. you is there a model motion by the way but no, 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 it's got to wing it all right give me a little chat yeah. slack here <laughs> i would second that normally we okay. do <laughs> so moved by commissioner riser and supported by commissioner hyde thank you Bob. Um, further discussion. Do, uh, the items that are the items to be addressed, mm -hmm. um, those 
can be picked up in the site. Um, and site they were addressed by the res uh, the, oh. men the the response. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, hours of operation. Okay, this yeah. is just the usage at this point. Right. right. Yeah. So it was in the memo in response to the review, basically. Yeah. One more discussion item. Sorry. Yes. Um, thank you, Commissioner Moore, for saying we need to actually plan these things. I think that is essential that we can get in front of the next storage unit that comes in front of us. So please, let's start planning. <laughs> and I also want to point out that. Um, it, as the uh, applicant said, that this facility will be fully suppressed, so that um, definitely aids in the firefighting um, issue. Look forward to seeing the plan. And, yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Right. Roll call vote, please. Okay. Commissioner Hyde. Yes. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Commissioner Sharma. No. Commissioner Riser. Yes. Commissioner Chang, yes. Commissioner Moore, no. And Commissioner Culbertson, yes. Right. It's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. So noted. You guys, we're going to have some working we sessions. I think that's the way to speed Thank it up. You. As long as our planner can keep up. You need a five minute break? Okay. Yep. Um, we'll take a five minute or less break. Okay. We're um, back and it's 8.39. And uh, we have unfinished business, uh, possible action, Goodrich Theater PUD amendment. And we have a memo from um, Mr. Mr. Juan. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, my computer decided to. So, do you want to uh, briefly review your memo? Yeah. Um, yes, it's a brief memo. And. Um, Someone remind me if the screen goes blank. I'll try to turn it back on. Um, so the applicant was uh, was with us previously in late February and um, provided a based on our comments in February provided a updated list in early March of this uh, of last month um, with a request uh, with a, a quite a reduced number of uses that they were uh, thought would work on this site they tried to tailor those based on what the planning commission's comments were previously and um, that's really what's before us the only out, the outstanding question that the applicant gave to me that I did forward to our township engineer OHM was with regard to sewer capacity. Um, OHM did get back with me on that question. And um, uh, Stacy's here, so I'm sure she can provide a little more information. But um, I guess kind of goes to a question that Commissioner Moore had earlier, and that's what, what happens with the remaining capacity uh, of the sewer system. And uh, it's my understanding that sewer is a more important, more critical issue than water. I don't know that water capacity is as critical of an issue, but and sewer is always kind of a limiting factor in development more than water. But um, that question was asked, and generally speaking, uh, the response from OHM was that there is remaining capacity. Uh, resident, uh, so residential project, it, it would, I should say the capacity wouldn't be enough to hold up a residential. A project like this. However, of course, they didn't. They can't give us a definitive answer because they don't know exactly what is being proposed. Number of units, yeah. Um, but uh, their general thought was that yeah, there is capacity in the system, and that that would not restrict uh, this residential development or perhaps other residential developments along the corridor at this time. We haven't reached that critical 
stage yet where we have to start worrying about that sort of thing. So can I ask a question? Like, who's the keeper of the capacity? You know, like the, the, the I don't know, the, 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 the king of the flushes, or however you want to say it. Is there like some benchmark on there? Or like, you know, that's a pledge drive and the thermometer's going up? Or how, 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 are, are there metrics that are available? How, Contract. No, 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 no. I know, I, I know, but there's a contract. But like, how do we know at any given point? How do developers know at That's any, a great any given point? You know, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and um, transparency, all that stuff. It, it's not a hard science. Put it that way. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to steal. <laughs> I don't want to steal Stacy's thunder or a gem, but. Um, there, as was mentioned, there is a contract amount, and, and I'm not an expert at this, okay. but, but there's a contract amount of flow that the city will accept. Obviously. Is that the REU? Yeah, yeah, the REU is residential equivalency unit. So that's that would be the, that's the amount of sewage that a single home would, that's how they kind of measure it. So an REU is one home. And so we measure, so commercial and industrial uses, depending on the use, had more or less than one REU. Yeah, mostly if it was an office building, it would have more than one REU. If it was like a self-storage facility, it might have less than one REU. And um, so there, there are uh, 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 every use can uh, the use can be uh, every use based on the REUs. We can determine how much sewer we're going to send to Ann Arbor, and then there is a capacity. There's there is an end game with how much they're going to accept. Um, so that's so. We can begin to determine that. Um, I don't know if OHM or the city has asked, the city, excuse me, the township has asked OHM to prepare a definitive report at this point. I think some of that has been done in the past. I'm not sure it's been updated with any real significant numbers recently. Because there's REU units allocated currently now for the movie theater, correct? Yes. And is that the only? usage of the REU within that PUD currently? Yes. That one that one structure. Yeah. So well No 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 all, the other two buildings. Yeah the other yeah. two buildings have something allocated to them as well. Okay. Now so my so I'll give you my brief my my understanding of of this and it was sort of alluded to I think by Bob uh, Hyde, Commissioner Hyde. And that is that um, generally speaking every property in Sire Township within the sewer service district has an allocated number of REUs. So some of, and, and depending on the use, those REUs may be more than what's needed or maybe less than what's needed. If if a property needs more, camera went off again. Yeah, if the property needs more, then they um, they have to petition to the Sire Township Board to increase the REUs on that site. And then at that point, the township has generally accepted those requests uh, with the understanding there is an endpoint. But that, so that's what happens. There, there is a number, yes. And the township knows that number in most cases. And then if there's a request for more, they have to actually request more. They don't automatically get those additional REUs. And they get more only if there's more available. But That's, there is more available right now than are allocated. Yes. And at one point, before the new contract was uh, established for Sio Township, and we were down to, I want to say, under 100 REUs available in the entire system. And so that's when the township renegotiated with the city of Ann Arbor. They upped the amount of flow they were willing to accept. And for many years, it was not an issue. Well, now we're starting to talk about this as an issue again. Because I think that while there's capacity now, I think there's a concern that sometime within the next five, ten years, that capacity probably is going to be used. As we develop westward. Yes. As we, yeah, as we intensify the development in the sewer district. So this is the yeah. first come, first serve? Yeah, I'm Jackson. Yeah, first come in. It's always been first come, first serve. Yes. Yeah. And I think. In discussions, uh, they did, I think it was, was it two years ago or so? I think they did do uh, an updated study and 
Um, so in about every five years, they recommend doing, you know, updating it because the other thing to understand is one, the leakage in the system, two, um, the REUs um, are very conservative. So with the right. with the type of fixtures we have now, et cetera, and, more, and all of that, and all right? That. You, you typically uh, Use one residential unit location. uses less than yeah, yeah. yeah what they but, but there could be a manufacturing process or someone that you know you know uh, comes in and is is using the other thing that we haven't done we haven't really gone out and identified high water users and. You know, see to, to see what could be done to reduce their water use too. So the, you know, there, there are a couple. There, there's a range of things out there, but it isn't like we have infinite ability to develop water users or sanitary sewer. Well, users. they're related. All right. Except for you know, I think a lot of people in, uh, use irrigation. Well, you can use well irrigation. So my, yeah, my uh, understanding, and I see Stacy turned her camera on. So oh, good. She's ready to go. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> my understanding Stacey. is um, that uh, you know sewer usage is the limiting factor, a much more limiting factor to development than water primary. So that's right. correct. Yeah. So, Stacy, uh, did I say anything that was crazy? <laughs> nope. <laughs> you were spot on. Okay. Um, we did can the meter. Go ahead. Can you tell us what the what the at no. what limit for wastewater and or for waste sewage? I'm sorry, sewer, and what's the limit for water? Like what's remaining? Yeah, we oui, we. Oui. There's around 1,200 REUs left in the sewer capacity. That's to put it into comparison. That's like four. Woodview size developments, um, and then I would be do not what size Woodview 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 Commons equal to four Woodview Commons size developments, right? Plus or minus. So there's still quite a few left. Um, this uh, Goodrich Theater development really shouldn't be too much of a concern with the sewer capacity remaining, even residential. Um, but like Doug said, we won't really know until an official plan is put together. And what's the remaining or the ceiling? What's left on our water? I do not have that number readily available, but that's something I can look okay. into if that's something you are interested in knowing. Yep, curious. It's, it's, it's safe to say, though, that it's much higher than 1,200 REU. Correct. Is it also measured in REU? I'm not sure, to be honest. Oh. And does this 1200 figure take into account projects that have already been approved or is that actual taps, you, you know? Okay. Yeah, so that'll okay. include um, right. all of the recent. Go ahead. Sorry. All of the recent um, subdivisions that are still being constructed that 1200 is after those are taken out. So that's like the raw available capacity. 1200. After they're taken. So you're saying anything that's approved has already been taken. subtracted from the amount? Correct. Good. This is new capacity available for anything yep. you want to. Anything approved is already. OK. All right, then. Okay. Wanna, okay, we I have think, the memo. Yeah, I think that's um, I think that's it. I think uh, Josh Sardini from uh, Etkin is here, and he can certainly go over his, uh, his uh, the list of uses that I provided to you. Um, but it, it, these do, you know, in looking at the minutes of that meeting, these uh, do seem to have uh, hit on what the uh, planning commission was requesting. It's, uh, so I want to keep, you know, get this going and, and um, make sure that we keep this on the radar because it sort of fell off. Really fast. I, I do want to make a comment yeah. if it's appropriate right now. Mm -hmm. So I looked at my notes, Josh, mm -hmm. if you will. I looked at my notes from our original meeting and the list of uses relative to the multifamily was 
four stories. And on your revised list here, you have three to six stories. So that would be two stories higher. That's not something that we agreed to. Should I come up here? Or yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can sit in the well if you like. No, I'm <laughs> Uh, just to be correct, uh, Josh Spardini with Atkin, 150 West 2nd Street, Royal Oak. Um, to answer the question, in my notes from the last two meetings that we had, we talked about um, per acre density and height. And the last time we met, uh, what I heard from the commission was wanting to use a range instead of a specific number. So that's why that changed just like the density is a, a range 20 to 30 units per acre, and then on the height, three to six stories, because depending on, it's kind of chicken and egg, depending on which and how you do it or what gets approved on density, or a mixed use could affect the height. And that's why we put a range on there in, the, in this most recent um, application and so, revised list. Yeah, I think we have, don't we have an ordinance that speaks to there can only be so many stories. J ride. Uh, there, there. When it's a PUD, there's some. But however, um, I mean, I, I guess I have a question procedurally with a PUD. Um, are we approving that, and they can't go over that, or because I'm just thinking, a lot of it depends on the configuration of the, the density and so forth. So, you know, sometimes you go higher to have more open space. Sometimes mm -hmm. you um, want lower because you want to have a mix of, of uh, multifamily. Um, I think most hotels right now are designed as either four or four. Uh, most four of is a normal four hotel. Four is the height. normal um, hotel height. Um, I, I don't know. Do, so is there any, I mean, do we have to just, is this sort of like a cap, but you know, you're, I mean, it, it's still under discretion of the plan. I'm just yeah, yeah. worried that with the PUD, if we say, okay, yeah, six stories, fine. But when we look at the site plan, no, we really don't want six stories. I mean, what, what where, where does it go? The approval. Yeah, right. Yeah. The, well, well, the applicant is looking for some boundaries, and so I think that's what we're looking at, is some boundaries. So if we say, if, not saying you're going to do this, but if you were to say, if you were to accept this list, and three to six stories was on that list, and they came in with a six-story building, right. you'd probably have to accept that. I agree. Yeah. However, you know, if you don't want six stories, I mean, this is, this is, the applicant says three to six. They are proposing something to us, so you don't have to accept that. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. So. Now, if they came back with something that was more, would we have, if it was a super good plan and it made all the sense in the world to be taller, could, could we change it at that point? Or are we like saying, nope, this is well, you what would we're be, doing? Because stories is kind of a significant issue, it's not like landscaping or something like that. That would require another public. I would say that would require another amendment to the PUD. Okay. Okay. So you could do it, but they'd have to. Amend they'd have to go through the public hearing and et cetera, because that makes sense. This is a public hearing. We had a public hearing. Correct. If, so, if I could, I, I mean, really, what we're after tonight is um, we're just specifically talking about uses. We're not talking about a plus specific site plan or a mix or any of that thing. Um, we really would appreciate move, trying to move that forward so that we could come back with something. You want that we possibilities. Could, so you right, just, po just possibilities so we could go to the market and okay. bring something to you uh, along the lines of what we've discussed in the last two or three meetings and what I think you're ultimately looking for across the district. Um, but, you know, that, that's why, to answer your question specifically, that's why it changed. It wasn't meant to be anything to try to go quickly or any of that. It was just that we heard in the last meeting um, that we'd rather have a range versus a specific, um, you know, data you point. Really have, we, that you heard from us that we wanted a range yeah. of stories? Yeah, I have it. I had it in my notes. Um, Sound about our subcommittee. 
Oh, your sub. No, no, it was in the last. Oh, talk. No, our right. last kind of. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess I, I'm a little bit concerned. I thought we had some regulation on height for there, buildings. There, there is regulation. Uh, every zoning district has height regulation. Yes. Now this is a PUD, so we could PUDs can be. We have uh, more. They, they can. Leeway. Know, the district can be altered as a part of a PUD. Uh, Commissioner Hyde. So I just want to say that you've hit everything that's on my list that I recalled by going back over the minutes and my notes. And, and my only big issue is the building height. Um, but I don't know that six stories is too tall. I don't know that three isn't enough to give you the density you want that we want so, uh, without seeing the actual plan. Um, I would have a question first. What What is the tallest, what is our hotel that's right over here? Um, oh, that, that, that's four stories. Okay, that's what I was remembering. That, was, that actually received a variance because that's not a PD, that's just a C3. So but it's acceptable to our fire department. So that that's what we have right now, they at least have a, Okay, I don't know that I would like to see the fire department weigh in before we go anything over what we already have. Uh, and we do have four, and all of those four stories that we've approved variances or whatever have been suppressed. Right. So there's yes. things that have to go into the building to get approval up to four right now. And so without knowing what you really want to come back in with, which might require an additional hearing if, if we short you, I would say four max. Um, would be, that's in effect a range. One, two, or three, or four. Well, could there be a condition on the three to six that it met fire approval and whatever code implications that had to be designed to? I mean, could we do it that way? Because that then if we come back and it doesn't meet your fire department approval or a code, jurisdiction then we can't be approved because most anything that we look at would be suppressed um, oh, yeah. and so you know um, that that would be a way you know just to condition the approval with and, and, I, and I know the chief says that you could have uh, I forget what the wells are called uh, the pipes that they put in the oh the stand pipes stand pipes that they put in I think that they're pre I'm not sure if they're pre-filled it typically, a standpipe is what they they attach, attach to the pumper truck and yeah, make to make sure the suppression system. But in this case, continues. there's a water supply. They they wouldn't right. have to hook it up to the truck. Yeah, we there could be standpipes or an actual fire pump, yeah. um, to where they're actually pumping and then there's a pressurization at the ground level. Yeah, and all that would come in at yeah. you know site plan approval time, but. Is the Holiday Inn the tallest building in Sire Township? I think four stories is the tallest that we've approved. And we've, uh, we've done that in a couple. Uh, the hotel? Uh, right. The hotel. Uh, and then um, I believe um, Crossroads had we approved a four story there twice. Yeah. And how about um, Heritage Woods? It came in at it's three. three. But they originally were talking two and four, weren't they? Oh, I'm trying to two different levels of that. I can't recall. Yeah, but there have been more that there've been the four stories, four but they've all been suppressed. So I think of that presentation that that Mandy Graylaw gave us mm -hmm. and the creativity that they use. And I'm thinking, if we were to use some of the concepts, this is the planning that you guys were clamoring for right. start planning tiger yeah <laughs> absolutely so, so, so absolutely. Um, you know so what would what could we give a powerpoint presentation to an adjoining township on what we did in our vision was so you know, the, you know this is where the rubber meets the road on that planning exactly uh, so, so, so we've got the opportunity to do something interesting here 
exactly. something dense. Single. We can get rid of the wastewater, it looks like, uh, with respect to whatever we put there, in, in, in a six-story structure with residential and the business that would come from residential that could walk to it, bike to it, bus to it. That, they put I mean, all that in here. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't, I don't have problems with the six stories. Now, is, is we got to talk about fire suppression and the ability to put out fires. And I don't know that you put out fires with, you know, on six-story fires with fire trucks versus standpipes and and, and, and uh, suppression systems. You know, but 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 this has got. This looks promising. That's my reaction to it. I don't know what you think. I, I'm going to defer to to you two. Right, right. No, it looks very promising. As a matter of fresh that. off the uh, well, fresh but, out, but fresh don't say too much at us either. We are not super explicit. Fresh out of the classroom. <laughs> With a little planning certificate. <laughs> yeah, I got my little no, planning no. certificate. Now we are ordering it. So, but uh, no, this is this is a this is exactly what we were talking about just half an hour ago. And this is, I would ask a question. A, a, a basic question. I mean, my excuse my ignorance. Um, do developers uh, help a township with funds to invest in their Firefighting equipment? Yes. That's, that, that's all I want to know. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yes, we have uh, one I, such I, I project. I'm going to the mechanics. No. Yeah. Oh, the although, we do need to um, it's gotta be. talk about this, too, because, you know, technically, this PUD, this is an amendment to a PUD. Yeah. So, which means it's, it, they've, all, the PUD has already done their community benefit. So if we want, I, I, you can correct me here, but I would say if there is a large change, if, if they it keep the building, change. yeah, if they keep the building and renovate the building, you know, great. But if they're going to do a major redevelopment that, that um, pushes the amount of, um, for instance, a large multifamily development, there'd be a lot more service calls, et cetera, to it. I would think we would want to have the leeway to negotiate a community benefit. If it's a, you know, a reuse of an existing building or something that has oh, a similar we type. We six stories, so it's not the reuse. Right, right. It's a, oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. I, I do yeah. think that that <laughs> would come into play, and I don't know how we incorporate that yeah, into the so amendment. Yeah. I just wanted to know think, the basic detail. I think how we could do that, because this is, un, this is unusual. This is unusual. I mean, we've all been here. I haven't been here a long time, and some of you have been here. I mean, to have this kind of request for a PUD amendment is unusual. Usually we have an actual, someone comes to us with a use, I understand what the applicant, we understand what they're asking us for, but typically we have a plan that we're reacting to. Well, in this case, they want, it, they want parameters of how they can market the site. So what I would suggest to address some of these things is that when the applicant comes back, they come back with what we would call a final PUD plan and we hold a public, another public hearing so that the adjacent property owners can be notified again of this plan. That we don't just say, this is it, come in with a site plan. That since this is a PUD, and they're in the PUD process, that they still have to come back with a final PUD plan. And that we add a condition that a public hearing be held for whatever plan they come before us. That's what I would recommend. So the, and why the, are you recommending that? Because that one, so that all this, so that they provide a plan that's consistent with their final PUD site plan, which is typically a site plan. But that would also allow us to start looking at things like public benefit and things like that. I see. That wouldn't, that would not take that off the table. And as Jan said, maybe there is no, maybe there's nothing we need to do. If they reuse the existing building, we already talked about public, you know, back then we talked about public, right. but if they're going to a six-story multifamily product, then maybe we start need, maybe we do need to talk about public benefit when it comes to fire suppression and things like that. 
So the big question is now how many floors are we ready to accept or consider, accept. consider? If they have so to they come can. back in with another PUD. Well, just the final PUD site plan. Correct. And we've said three to six, and they come in with six, and what they're doing, for whatever reason, we have a problem with. We don't have to give it approval if they don't comply with if they don't answer our problems. And the only problem I can think of is the ability to fight a fire or not enough emergency exits or you know whatever. It's got to meet standards. OK, I'm getting lost. Uh, so do, do we decide right now? Because uh, that way they, they can go to the market. Yeah. I think what's before us is to, cite, is to agree or disagree with the updated list. And by this. Right? It's really the updated vision for perhaps the, this is the vision, right? This is, I mean, what you're talking about the vision. This is what we want there. And while we, while we might think it'd be cool to have a six story multifamily with some retail and grocery, at the end of the day, it could be office technology and dental right. in the old, in the old theater. Yeah. And with, and with the, Big ass parking lot that surrounds it. <laughs> yeah. It isn't how they pitched it, but it yeah, could yeah. be that. <laughs> yeah, so so we could have a vision, but could he could have like ten doctors and dentists lined up in the back of his head that might want to move in here for the SIO residents. It, it, which would be fine under this. Josh, have you heard anything on the headquarters? On the what? The headquarters use. Have you had which who uh, a user that's out there? Yeah, I don't know which user you're. you're... No, I, I know you've spoken a couple times. Oh, about have I heard from headquarters? I office. get calls from brokers, yeah, about the property a lot. Um, but it's spe in specific to a s one specific HQ. No, I haven't talked to anybody in specific about it. Um, but I think our our struggle, if you will, is more that. We, do, we need to know what the rules of the game right. are so that we can go play the game. I wasn't, I thought before we were going, we were trying to work towards approving a list of uses. And then once the list of uses were approved, we would be coming back with a specific site plan for site plan approval, right. not for a secondary PUD approval, because that, that could quite honestly slow down and tank a deal. No, we have to. Well, we have to amend the PUD. No, I know that, but oh. and which which was amending it with these six or seven uses and their parameters. That's that's the route I thought we were going, because um, you know, if time kills deals, and if we have to do things twice, it could have impact on that. Well, I move to approve the updated list of uses. I, I guess I would like to see, I would like to see the medical office dental office to be a, a part of mixed use so it isn't a standalone use. Well, as I understood it, when we discussed this, any of these could be part of the mixed use. No, but retail, but grocery. They, they could be, but I think what uh, the chair is asking is that they mu that that one must be. It and that, be a standalone. I hear what you're saying. It isn't what we talked about last time. I see. Okay. Unless I missed it, but I don't. I think you missed it. Okay. I don't. I don't think that one was. But I, I would like to add that as a, a part of a mixed use. That would be a requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a standalone, just medical. She doesn't want a medical arts building there unless there's a little diner or unless there's a little grocery or retail or something else to bring to kind of give a little diversity of, of, uh, of customers, so to speak. Is that, that's the sense that I'm getting from that? In our minutes from the last, from the yeah. previous time, it was, um, this was Commissioner Culberson, Chair Culberson summarizing the, the important goal was to bring in more people to the site and utilize, yeah. uh, never mind that. Commissioner Moore argued strongly for higher density residential use. She supported apartments, restaurants, bars, entertainment, indoor recreation, and lodging as prime uses and did not want the, uh, not so much the other uses, they could be secondary. So it was 
primarily we were looking for residential with associated businesses. That's how I recalled it. Mm -hmm. So that's Are you a my message to Josh. That. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying when we talked about it last, we had two that were musts, and and we we did talk about those very detailed. Uh, but if we if that needs to be amended to include that, that's okay. What, what are your two? Uh, retail and grocery. It's on the. It had to be a part. Had of to be part of mixed use. use. And I guess just medical office and dental office. I wanted to add to the. Um, Not residential. No. It could all it could all straight be residential. I think we're all happy with that. Residential plus these others. No. No, no the others, residential. medical office and dental office, would need to have, be part of a mixed use. It would need, need to be part of a mixed use. Oh, right. in order to have said, those, it has to be standalone. Okay. You got to yeah. give us something other than just a medical arts. You got to give us medical arts plus a restaurant or a bar plus an office plus a little grocery plus a little retail something like that. That's the sense that I get what you want. But if you want to do housing, it can be housing and that's it, baby. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So make it simple and straightforward because after all, it's not our wish list, uh, wishes that alone matter. The market will decide what they what it wants, right? Mm -hmm. Not him, not us, the market. So why not make it simple but also effective? Uh, yes, only housing is one or any of the others. Any of them. As a mix. Yes. As a mix. Uh, two, three, four, whatever the ratio, it doesn't matter. Make it simple but straightforward because the market has to decide, not me or you. Yeah, so, I think so. there was one other one that the entertainment, indoor recreation, whatever, which it, it could be. Yeah. yeah. So, and lodging, but lodging wouldn't have to be an excuse either because that would support all the other beauty. Lodging can also come with the restaurant, you know. Most, mm -hmm. most places have a restaurant in, at least in the U.S. And the, I think one of the things is the site already has. Well, that, that, that there will be a thing, we can have one more. Yeah. Okay. Because that essentially corresponds with our vision of create, cre creating a crowded environment. There is color grill and then whatever else comes along. But yeah, I mean, we have to make it simple. So housing, that's it, or any of the above. They can choose. They can at choose. least two of the, yeah. at least two, the yeah, following. Yeah. You can make it minimum stipulation. Uh, like a like a like a restaurant pick too. <laughs> well, well, like we're not really making it that simple. I, I you know I'm. It's like because they're right now I'm looking at eight uses. Yeah. And we're saying that housing can stand alone. That lodging can stand alone. That indoor recreation and entertainment. Can be standalone. Did we say that? Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. this says. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it generally mean, though? He's interpreting what was presented to us. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't know. So you, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Josh. Josh, you've probably seen this, and you've worked this with came Josh. From Josh. <laughs> this this is, is from me. And well, it says Carlisle Warman at the top. Mm -hmm. So, so. I but, but just to answer, you, you're on the right track. What you're saying, and I can explain each one, is multifamily on its own, because I'm hearing there's a, there's a want for multifamily. The retail, we had said last time we would agree that uh, it would have to be part of a mixed use, which we defined a mixed use as being two or more of the approved uses on this list. Got it. Same with grocery. Yeah. Office technology research, we said, could be standalone. Okay, medical at the time, standalone, but I'm willing to put that in as, you know, as part of a, the same definition as mixed use. Put several up in there and you got it. Restaurant bars as part of the mixed use. And then entertainment, the only different with that one was, was that it, that the restaurant or bar would not be subject to it. And the reason being because we may very well potentially be able to find a replacement use for the existing building, needing the parking, and so on and so forth, that might include a bar or restaurant, and we wanted to be open for that. That's that's why we talk about that one, and then lodging would be standalone on itself as well. Sorry, in entertainment, indoor recreation, which may include restaurant bars, mm -hmm. but you also have restaurant bars above. Can right, because this, a new, like a standalone restaurant and bar, we we're saying has to be part of a, a, a mixed use. 
but an en entertainment or indoor recreation facility, whether it was, okay, okay. you know, ice skating rink, something like that, had a, bar. Yeah, had a bar, a restaurant, that wouldn't have to have the stipulation that's part, part of the mix. So case. what would be some, the most likely entertainment, indoor recreation? What would, like, in this day and age? In this day and age, like, like a family, you? like I'll call it a family fun center where there might be like games and like go-karts and this and that and, and all that kind of stuff, but they usually have uh, a restaurant that has a bar in it. Okay, how about like those little trampolines you jump on? What is that? Is that, that would be, usually I don't see, I don't see bar, bars, bars no, in there, but they may sell, they may sell food. <laughs> <laughs> is that, 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 that usually that, games. Is that indoor recreation? Yes, yeah, so I would say so, yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. or, or the pickleball or the tennis and the bowling. Yeah, and a lot of and a lot of those are mixed up. It might be tennis, pickleball, golf, and they usually have a little restaurant and serve beer and wine or whatever. Um, so that would classify as that as well in my mind. Would rifle ranges also be considered indoor recreation? That's a good question. I, that's not something. No, you have to get licensed. That would be considered a conditional use, right? Well, it wouldn't be a use. We did consider the Arbor Arms to be a commercial recreation. Okay, we did. We're now looking for another one. I, it, that wasn't one. And I understand what you're saying. What's the signal you're getting from the market? Or any particular examples you can share, or you don't have any of them? Uh, there's people that call from all over that talk about entertainment and recreation. Residential, lab, uh, technology space, okay. uh, more restaurants. Pretty much this list. This list. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good. Yeah. So if you're amenable to um, the medical office, dental office, as part of a mixed use, which is categorized as two or more of the approved uses on this list, that would sure. work for me. I will accept that friendly amendment. Okay. Is there support? Second. Yeah. And ha and we have no leverage if we don't require a PUD site plan for community <coughs> benefit or well, if there, there has to be a next step, right? Mm -hmm. So the next step, which should be probably in your motion, should be either just accept these uses as a final site plan or accept them as a final PUD plan. It makes more sense to me if we accepted them as a final PUD plan. It's not a new PUD, it's just that's the process that a PUD would go through if it's going through a major amendment, which this is going through a major amendment. So it would seem to me that it would seem to me that the next step for whoever decides to do this would submit a final PUD site plan. Okay, and then that would be that would be the last time yeah, we would it. see it. So it, it's just like it's requesting a site plan as opposed to you've got to come back to the planning commission. We want to see it. We do. Well, I, I, okay, but I, I do have to ask. I, I understand that you need to see it, but I will state again, that's not what we were under the uh, guise of, or what we thought we would have to do. But I will say, can or ask the question, if that's the case, can that um, final PUD site plan be treated as site plan approval concurrently? That, that's what it is. Well, what happens? But, but, there's, but it's a different though because there's a different public hearing about uh, it. Well, <laughs> no, let me, let me back up. I'm, I'm just waiting to be told how to vote on this. <laughs> be told how to vote. <laughs> no, so I maybe rescind what I said about okay. requiring a public hearing for this plan because there's not a public hearing required in front of the planning commission. But there is a public hearing yeah. required regardless of what we do here. There will be another public hearing required at the township board. I get that. So I'm just saying in the, at this okay. committee. Yeah. So what I that think what we're saying is, is like, yeah. does the does does it stop here, no. or is it really just kind of starting here? Then this fine gentleman will be back in front of the board, and they're going to have all the questions that yeah. he's going to say. Why didn't they do this or whatever that? Yeah. And he goes, "Here's what I, you know." You can you explain can, it to you him. You can explain it. <laughs> 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 <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> Good luck, buddy. No, but, um, <laughs> no, but I, I. We only have the ability to recommend. No, I get that. Okay. So, and we're going to recommend something today. I sense, based on positive comments toward his, his, his the plan, 
And then will we be back here for a public hearing or will that be in front of the Board of Trustees? The public hearing for a major PUD amendment would be in front of the Township Board. Okay. We already had one here, but then to get the thing finally approved, there's to be another one in front of the Board. But then does, do things come back here for a either a site plan approval or a preliminary or PUD plan approval or what's the nomenclature that it's, it's used in this case? It would be a PUD plan approval. PUD plan approval. Now, I'm thinking about this. <laughs> and sometimes the best point of valor is to hold off because there's a lot of moving parts here about what the next step will be. And I'm not exactly certain I'm giving you the proper advice right now. It might be best to postpone this for two weeks, allow me to figure out what the process should be. If you're okay with the uses, that's great. I think that's what they have Can we just approve the uses tonight? Yeah, you could approve the uses today. Oh. Yes. Because he's got to, he, he wants to know, he wants to let Colliers and whoever yeah, yeah. know that you know and that will give me some time. Bring me a bring me a Sheridan. Yeah. Could we could we do something like uh, we approve the uses and um, defer to the the process being defined yes. by the planner as long as it comes back before the planning commission? Yes. Yes. When yeah. it comes back to the planning commission, no, it doesn't come back. It goes to the BO. Well, no, no, no. after this doesn't come BOT. back, but the plan the site plan comes, comes back. The approval. Oh, the site plan, PUD when? approval comes back here. Yeah, the, okay. whatever, the, whatever oh. approval is required comes back to the Planning Commission. So, so we, we don't, have we don't, the ability to, to negotiate public benefits also at that time? Oh, that's what we, that, that's, that's okay. Find out. I'm not opposed to a six-story building whatsoever, but there should Norm be, I? you know, negotiations for the public benefit if it is, you know, more fire coverage or whatever so paths or environmental or yep. sustainability so, or solar or yeah what is the hell sustainable it yep yep something doesn't yeah something oh, so we cannot give him uh, a the commitment the... on number of floors today uh oh yeah. pardon what kind of guidance can we give him on the number of floors arranged we can we, 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 i we, just we, moved we, i there is a move so there's a motion on the floor, floor. You do that also okay that I, to approve the to approve the updated list of uses yeah. and that the medical office, re rental office, be a part of mixed use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, th and that the, uh, the, it's, it's, it's approved. It's, it's, it's part of the six. three to six. That's you want to make it seven? Three to six. It says oh, six. six. Okay. So, okay. So that is a, uh, Okay, fine. Yeah, fine. we're approving the list, including that. Mm -hmm. that and that's my motion. Because that's what he brought up at the very beginning, that's why. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So uh, and, and just then, because we say up to six, if the fire chief says, I can't handle right. that, right. then it won't get approved in the final plan. So it's got to be worked out with our fire department. That's all. So that's, that's an amendment, right? If I, no, amendment, I'm just no. clarifying that if we It has say, to anyway. We can't, okay. we would approve. So I do have a question. It says three to six. Does that mean if he wants two, we say no? We need at least three story? Up to, we should say up to six. Because there may be a townhouse or something that's well, only two. The question is, if he comes up with two. So she just said up, up to six. six. Up to six. Up to Up to six, but in the, no many of them. There can be one then. Can't be zero, so up to six. But the density range is 20 to 30. So, so it's going to be higher. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was, it, that's, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so if you have we'll both, then that. you can, yeah. Density. So it's just a max height and yeah. uh, the density range. Is that a friendly amendment? Yeah, Is what a friendly yeah. amendment? Up to six. six. Up to six stories. Absolutely. Okay. Support? Did anybody support? I did. Okay, good. Okay, so it was moved by Commissioner Moore, supported by Commissioner Human. Further discussion. Now, do we have in that amendment that it's coming back to the Planning Commission? The well, that's we're going to be advised plan. about that, so I don't okay. want to put that in the motion. Okay. Do we need? You wanted to work out so. um, to be the pro process to be uh, determined and brought back to the Planning Commission. 
Okay. At the next meeting. Okay. Approval process to be determined and brought back to the Planning Commission. You can say for consideration. For consideration. Before you vote, I just have a how, if I that's all fine. I, but in my head, I'm trying to think how this would work. What does if if this committee approved the uses, then we'd have to go to uh, the board to get the uses approved, then yeah. come back down and yes. get. We then can come, only recommend. Then, right. Then come back down with the process and a plan to planning commission. Yeah. Then go back up to the board to get that. That's always the case. That's always the case. I mean, we have to whip them. We got that. That's yep. just it's a necessary. Yeah, that's, that's the, yeah, the only time. Great site plan. That'd be the case. Yeah, it, it, the only time we don't see the final oh, site yeah. plan is a, if it's a by right development. Then it then it. The so when final can, site plan goes? So to the when board. can Josh get his updated uses before the BOT? Today. Oh, before the BOT. How does that work, John? Well, that, Do you know? Yeah, no, John, the minutes have Mr. to be Reiser. approved. The minutes have to be approved. And as soon as the minutes are approved, they can move on to the township board. Tonight's minutes, yeah. which well, we don't have. Meeting. And we so won't have to our next meeting. Right? Two weeks. The 9th or the 23rd? The 9th of, of May, May or the 23rd. So it would have to be the 23rd. What would? Why? Well, they can. They would assume that our minutes, well, our are minutes going to be from approved. this meeting won't be approved to our next planning commission meeting, Correct. which and, is in and, two weeks. Yeah, and projects have, knowing that we were going to approve the minutes anyway, they would go to BOT the next night. They have done that. So our okay. So our next planning commission will have the minutes from tonight's meeting. Yep. We'll approve our minutes. And when is the, the next BOT meeting? The, the, the next day. 5-8 is us, 5-9 is them. And who gets oh. it on the okay. agenda? It, it is... The, their uh, agenda process, whoever does your I agenda. I would work with uh, the supervisor and the manager. You put it on the agenda. Them? Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to facilitate a little bit of... Push yeah, I'm so just you trying can to at least get your list of uses so you can start to market your project. No, I appreciate that. I'm I'm just trying to figure out what is going to require a public hearing and what doesn't. That's my that's my next concern. We kind of need a little bit more uh, feedback from our. Um, yeah, you're you're not sure consultant. if it needs a public hearing in front of the board. Yeah, I got it determined. Okay, yeah. that's what he's There's determining some, with the process. This is, this is on there may be one additional public hearing with the and BOT. That, that's either yeah. going to occur right away or at the site plan stage. Okay. <laughs> and by that you mean when there's an actual product, a company, a, an idea, here's what it looks like, come talk about it public. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Yeah. yeah, I think it should be. I don't think it should be a separate. Well, we have to see what the requirements are. That's what he's saying. He needs to check the process. Okay. okay. So we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Any further discussion? So a motion to approve the updated list of uses and that the medical office rental be as part of mixed use and up to six stories regarding residential and approval of the process to be approved by the Planning Commission. Did I get everything? That last one. It's not approved. We don't approve the process. They, we just get re the process gets. He's going to let us know. Let us know. Okay. Report on the process. Report, report, report on the next meeting. Oh, and Mr. Luan will report to the planning commission as to our next steps, our next on our process. Is that how you understood it? That, yeah, that's that's fine with me. I'll second that again. Okay. Yeah. So, any further discussion? The uh, yeah. question I have is, if the density is at 20 to 30 units per acre, and it's six stories, like an algebra high school, how many toilets are we going to need? REUs. What does this do to our REUs? Where are we going to get that? What's that? When we get that site plan, well, we, know we can evaluate that. From what Stacy said is Woodview Commons was how many units? 200? 300. 300? 
It would no. be four. It, we have. It would be equivalent of four wood. View yeah, so Commons developments. And there are 1,200 left, which yeah, means it's about 300 so, REU per. What's, what's yeah. the Commons again? That's the big development that was. It's the East of Baker and Jackson. It, 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 it comes down to, just because we have to calculate this all the time to make it sense, whatever standard you're using, certain counties use different factors. So some use how many toilets, sinks, garbage disposals, dishwashers, and blah, 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 and they spit out a number that equates to one equivalent. Some use different and others. So if you had two bedrooms, three bedrooms, one bedrooms, they might get counted differently. If you have something on the first floor that's uh, commercial in nature, like a restaurant, depends on how many uh, restroom toilets are in there. So it, it all plays into a calculation, but I think what we heard from OHM was you had 1,200 left, which equivalent to four of the wood views um, which would be 300 for, so, you know, that's all that you can go on right now, and that's what I'm banking on. Uh, so until we do the actual design, you, you don't know. But you're going to be well under 1,200. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, or my gosh. Or you could be rejected because you don't have enough. Yeah, if you don't have enough, okay. it doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Call the question. No, uh, can I ask? <laughs> no, I'm trying to be respectful of the public. Um, yeah. One of the members of the public has their hand up. I just want to let the chairperson know that. And you can choose whether you want to uh, recognize that person or not. I'll be, I have no problem. Sure. Sure. Okay, the consensus is sure. Okay, so Mr. Mr. Pattinson? Oh, no, have... not if it's Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Pattinson, it's got to be a have... short. Thank you, Mr. Luan. That, I greatly appreciate that. I just want to caution you that if you do this tonight, you have just approved six-story buildings in Sio Township, and you've set the precedent. The height of buildings in Sio Township has been a massive issue for years, and if you do this tonight with this wording, you have set the precedent. So just caution. That's all I had to say. Thank you very much for letting me um, inject that. Thanks, Rob. It is a concern, but we just don't know uh, what the fire chief is going to say. Right, and, and, and if we do want six-story buildings, the market will have to support it. That's right. You know, and two, it's not gonna come this up. is where we want it. We want it where there's density. We want it where there's infrastructure. The, you know, we yep. don't want it uh, where we, we have the road out in the farm. I'm exactly right. Or on Z Road, or something like that, where we got to put in a private sewer, or piss they off neighbors. Yeah. You know, people driving by, they're going to have to look at it on I ninety four. But you know, subject to approval. Th this I mean, is the this, right spot. Th this, this is kind of where we want. I mean, Rob's got a great point, but to the extent that market will support density, we'll know that. To the extent that there really is demand for housing, and we'll know that housing of this urban style. Uh, you know, to the right yeah, and, and I'll be really clear. It isn't appropriate for everywhere in Scioto. <coughs> and, it, it, and we don't have the REUs to be able to make it appropriate everywhere on Jackson Road in the sewer district either. So, you know, this is a very unique. It's so beauty. You're not getting You're financing to have to have to a six story building unless they can yeah. fill it. And it's right around the corner from the fire department. Yeah. Okay. And All right. How you suppress fire in a six-story building with standpipes and fire suppression is something that they'll need to work out with a with department who knows more about that than, than this body here. It's the but it's different than driving up and squirting water on the roof. All right. Any further discussion? I think someone did call a question quite a while ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll call vote, please. <laughs> Commissioner Hyde? Yes. Commissioner Human? Yes. Commissioner Sharma? Yes. Commissioner Reiser? Yes. Commissioner Chang? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. And Commissioner Culbertson? Yes. Okay. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to see what you propose. Me either. Um, how, Doug, how do I, this process, how do we? I think, I think you and I have to talk about that. I'll, I'll, I'll work with them. All right. Okay. All right. Moving on to uh, reports, we have. I just wanted to say, um, 
appreciate your working with us, Mr. Josh. Thank you, and yeah. I appreciate uh, all the time we put into it. Hopefully we can, we'll try to find something that we'll all be proud of and, and look forward to. So yeah, we're excited about someone's coming. <laughs> <laughs> <You're excited. laughs> well, you will see it. <laughs> so you will it. We will see it, yeah. Look we'll, we'll, we'll forward to seeing the dentist's office. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's storage. That's what we need. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, reports. We do have um, two reports that were written. Any questions on those? Thanks, Bob, for yours. Thanks, John, for yours. Um, Carlisle Wartman. Mine's still um, shorter. Just one item. Uh, Chris was in a gratification meeting that we had. I think since our last planning commission meeting, I think there's been one true gratification meeting. And that was for um, the possibility, very conceptual, but the possibility of using some of the um, out the uh, Menards and Hope Lots as multifamily residential. Um, they are specifically looking potentially at the two outlots that front Stabler and the one little lot that was proposed a couple months ago for self storage. Um, so the, the two outlots that front Jackson are still, they weren't part of this concept proposal. But um, those are very conceptual. And, you know, you don't have a site plan yet, but that, that was, we had a pre application meeting. Crystal Those are commercial. good general projects. Commercial? Is that right now? They're, they're, they're zoned general commercial? They are currently all zoned commercial. Yes. Commercial. So would residential be a permitted use in commercial? Multifamily, because it's in the Jacks Road Overlay District, multifamily could be considered as part of a mixed use project. So in other words, would it be, would it be by right? No. Okay. And was it was it condo, townhouse, any anything? Uh, as long as you guys are throwing out concepts, I, I want to say it was townhouse, wasn't it? I, I want to say it was like seventy-two, it, seventy-two units, something it like that. to be. I don't think they had elevation drawings. I, I think it appeared to be townhouses. So a little lower density. Some, I, I want to say 72 units per, I think so. yeah. somewhere in there, give or take, okay. per, per so parcel. Not too bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds I like good. where it's going. Get that housing in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, OHM. I have nothing to report, uh, but I did talk to Sally, and there's not a specific number of the remaining capacity in terms of water. It fluctuates too much, and it's really hard to put a number on it. Thank you but for checking. It, no problem, but it should not be a concern. Um, it hasn't been since I've been involved and since Sally's been involved. It's really just the sewer, but that shouldn't really be an issue at this point yet either. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. All right. I haven't been to the DDA yet, but I do have um, the other ones. Um, chair report, I did um, attend the Catalyst Communities Workshop, um, and this was, uh, it was held by the state, Eagle ran it, and the Catalyst Communities are uh, communities that are working on My Healthy Climate Plan and putting together climate action. And so um, what we really did is we developed content um, using our uh, climate action plans or other master plan goals um, for input into the state's um, uh, grant request. And there are gonna be two rounds of grants that are coming from the, in, I think it's coming from the Inflation Reduction Act, um, I believe. Um, and in Michigan, the state is preparing um, a, a um, a grant request, SEMCOG, uh, because the Detroit area is eligible because of the size, and we are a part of SEMCOG, and then the Grand Rapids area. So we will have two opportunities to um, hopefully uh, be able to uh, 
receive some grant funds, either through the state or through um, SEMCOG. For the first one is for planning, um, for climate action planning. And the second one, and that's distributed, so everybody gets a cut. And then the second one is based on that plan um, that is resulted from that funding, and that's a competitive grant. So we probably want to um, make sure we are keeping tabs on SEMCOG and participating with SEMCOG. So that's something Get some of that to funding. Do. Yeah, so we have two opportunities. So we mean as a board or as a, as a township, a township or like as a township. <clears throat> do we have a rep to that? A rep to it? Oh, we have not designated a rep to SEMCOG yet. And we also don't have a, a rep for Watts. I think Steve was on one of the Watts committees, but that's also a transportation planning. <coughs> um, okay, uh, next uh, we had a, uh, an organizational meeting um, for the specification update and ordinance updates and both OHM and Carlisle Wartman um, attended. Uh, we discussed the purpose, the approach, and the scope of the updates. Now we have to follow through with a plan and a schedule. Um, one of the ways that we can connect with SEMCOG is they are looking for uh, input onto their 2050 transportation plan. And I've been trying, I haven't heard back from Watts. I'm trying to get Watts to be a part of that meeting. Um, it's just going to be a Zoom meeting. Um, and uh, Commissioner Moore um, volunteered to coordinate a presentation by the executive director of WAVE. And so we need to kind of see which meeting and coordinate schedules with her. Um, ZBA, um, we approved a year setback variance. It's, and it's rare for the ZBA to approve a variance. And this one um, just happened to be a, there was, it was an existing garage in the 20s, very odd lot, lots of, lots of unique conditions. So, um, the ESTF uh, reminder to uh, share and encourage comments on the draft by May 1st. Um, it's also been distributed to- By May 1st. Yeah, by May 1st. Um, here in River Watershed Council and uh, uh, the Water Resources Group, uh, Resilient Washtenaw with the county. And uh, so, cause they're the major kind of collaborating partners on it. Um, the next steps will be uh, to incorporate our review comments and then it will, We'll probably, we still need to determine process on that, Doug, whether it's a, repub, a public hearing or if it's just um, be, how, what the relationship to the master plan is. But the trustees want to approve it, so we would recommend approval and then go to the trustees at least. Then, um, do we have a public hearing if we need one? Um, it, I, I guess you can always schedule a public hearing, right? Yeah. yeah, so it's on. we can, we can do that, mm -hmm. which I think makes sense. Um, then also two of the SEAS project team members who have worked with us, the uh, task force for uh, about a year and a half, are um, going to continue as the two interns working part-time over the summer. So they'll be able to continue that community engagement and plan that October event. Um, and then the pre-app rotation, I'm on for May. Kim, you've got June. Uh, Jeff, I have you. You got June? You got June. And Didn't I do February? Yeah, well, we have some people that can't do it. So, um, and then Jeff, we have you for July and August. Okay. That's your two months. Great. I can do June. I have to be home. Strawberries yeah. start coming out. All Ooh. right. Okay, that's my report. Harvest. Ooh. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Just, mm-hmm. No, that's good. And uh, I haven't attended a DDA meeting yet, and uh, I don't think the housing group has met again, right? No, that's in July. Okay, great. Um, road. We don't meet until next month. Okay, great. Then that, those are the reports. So moving on. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, PPP. Sorry. I so there is a special meeting this Wednesday. We'll be visiting uh, Township Parks. They'll be meeting here at four o'clock by vehicle, so we will just follow each other, and it'll last from four to six o'clock. So, a little site visit. A preserved tour. Yeah. Nice. Yep. 
Sorry about tomorrow that. Tomorrow night is uh, your, let's see, oh no, that's LPC. LPC's presentation. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, now. You ought to be a good one. Come to that one, folks. <laughs> yeah, I'll be zooming. Yeah, I'll be zooming too. Yeah, that'll be a good one. <clears throat> all right. Okay, on to minutes. <laughs> Is on page two, three, the third um, paragraph in the bottom, Pittsfield Township did not join AATA but instead entered a purchase of service agreement um, for flex ride, which is paid to AATA out of the general fund. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't that AATA didn't, they didn't contract with AATA. So, so it's just, does that make sense? Yeah, so it's page two, yep. third from the bottom. Flex right is part of the ATA. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. A purchase of service agreement for flex right, which is paid to AATA out of the general fund. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have any other? Is there support? So moved. Support. Okay, moved by Commissioner Hyde, supported by Commissioner Reiser. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, uh, approved as amended. Any other announcements? Move to adjourn. Motion <laughs> to adjourn. Support. Uh, Commissioner Moore, supported by Commissioner Reiser. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned at 9.49. So I'll report, I will report out tomorrow to the uh, OT. It'll be a short report because that might be a long meeting. Um, recording. So, uh, did you, did you, did you we voted to. We adjourned. adjourned.